Uh, so, uh, we are uh, doing the Reverie Roundtable right now, which we have Mondays uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, consider uh, coming by the channel sometime, you know, joining us here. But also hitting the like button and the comment thing. Maybe not the like button. We might not deserve it after this. Um, and <laughs> subscribing, subscribing, subscribing is not, it's not always, oh my God, I, <laughs> I don't like this at all. Uh, hitting that subscribe button, uh, and consider becoming a team member, uh, hitting that join button, supporting us that way, um, means a, a ton. Um, okay. So I'm going to introduce all these, uh, lovely guests, right? Um, and we'll go from there. We'll start, well, not with someone lovely, but a guest. Hey, Bam. Uh, thank you for being here. <laughs> Always choosing violence. Like, we didn't even start it yet. Um, hey, everybody. Name's Bam. I will have the most correct takes today, as I always do. Never been wrong. If you're against me, I don't know. Push P. That's it. I still don't quite, like, I saw the video, but why is that popular? I don't. Did it come from that video? That The SpongeBob? No, it didn't come for that. We we was pushing people for that. We, we, I have I no came, idea. What out. is this? Why have people I, tell me? I don't know. <laughs> you, was, uh, you 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 understand because you weren't born in the P. Like what? Yeah, the, it, what? It's, 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 it's a lifestyle. Go get it. All right. Um, moving on. All right. I'll ask my white friends. Uh, Wick. Uh, <laughs> don't ask me. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, name's Wick. Uh, I run the Death of Certainty channel, which you can find me at twitch.tv slash death of certainty. Um, I'm, I'm trying something new tonight. I, I've come on these things before, but I haven't I haven't streamed while I've been on here. So I'm trying to stream tonight. Well, so we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so I'm here to to just uh, tell everyone while they're wrong, unless they agree with me, in which case they're based and right. So here I am. Hey, thank you. Um, next, we got... <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, Ashley, Ashley, thanks for being here. Thanks <laughs> for being a part of this. <clears throat> Ashley, uh, uh, yeah, thanks for jumping on. I was uh, happy when you uh, said yes, right? Um, yeah, you're always a fun individual. Uh, so Ashley, tell me what about you. yourself. Hi, um, I, I go around killing people in a video game called Black Desert on my channel and talk about trans issues. Cool. That's really it. Succinct, all right? Gets to the point, all right? Unlike some other people here. Um, uh, <laughs> we'll go to Stardust. Um, Stardust is here with us uh, again. Uh, she was here yesterday in a great sport, right? Who doesn't hold grudges. Uh, <laughs> she's here with us. Stardust, uh, how are you? That's amazing. Wow. Like, that's all really deep. Did that happen? Oh, is she okay? What? Really? Oh my God, Stardust. Ah, oh, and how much blood was there? All right? Did you have to cut them up in the Sorry, tub? I didn't even realize. Sorry, I actually don't. Wait, so here's the thing. I didn't realize I was I was muted. Uh, I, I actually don't hold hold grudges. I don't know why you're so scared of me, Prime. It I'm makes no scared. sense. I'm not scared of you. <laughs> you act like you're scared of me every time you interact with me. It's so strange. You act like you're terrified. Like I'm like, I don't know, like I'm that I'm like this terrifying person. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Star, um, or Stardust on Twitch. Uh, you can find me on Stardust on Twitch. Uh, I do <laughs> debates sometimes. Um, I'm about to drop some very nuclear takes. I'm hoping that they'll be nuclear uh, tonight. And uh, and uh, sometimes I play video games and yell at people. That's about it. So, yeah. You don't move your mouth much when you speak. I didn't know. <laughs> like, when you were smooth, I didn't know you were talking. Wow. Oh, you know what? Maybe yeah. that's why Prime is like terrified. I don't know why he always acts like he's terrified of me. There's that's, it's that's so strange. That's so I don't hold grudges, Prime. Why why do you think I would hold the grudge on you? <laughs> would you would you like would you like women to move their mouths more when they speak, fam? Huh? I, I, it was just an observation. <laughs> she can she can move her mouth however she chooses. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> All right. No wonder women don't come on this channel very often. All right, anyway, uh, <laughs> let's move on. I'm not afraid. Uh, last username, right? Person fills me with joy. Uh, last username. <laughs> He's also wondering, why did I accept this? Uh, I don't last... know how I do that. <laughs> 
Why does Prime look so scared of last username too? Well, I, I I, I'm, I'm He's like literally crying laughing. Almost. How am I? <laughs> it's nervous laughing. You though. have it is. It's the laughter people. like as the Come as you're being led to the gallows that. kind what? of laughter. Are you know, this, what he one who scared this is more Prime and last username know what happened, and Prime knows he was in the wrong. Right. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm like, like I'm full of mirth here, right? I honestly like last username. I'm happy that they're here. Um, last username, right? The bringer of joy. Hey man, I don't bite. <laughs> How are you, buddy? I'm great, Prime. I am last username. Uh, anarchist Canadian. Uh, anar 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 Canadian, if you will, something like that. Uh, I'm trapped in Canada, so please invade uh, as soon as possible. And um, good to be here, as usual. Hey, uh, absolutely. You want uh, to delay? <laughs> we will. I will. Well, next, we'll go to a person who would actually like to make that dream come true. We'll go to uh, Dark Lord and Saber Doobie. Uh, Doobie, right? Um, <laughs> please uh, tell uh, our last username what America has to offer um, when uh, our troops come to bring the freedom. Okay, well, this has gone well. This joke is I'm here. Hello. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Uh-huh. Uh, lot, lots of freedom, I hope. Um, but I, I do need to say something. It's extremely important. Um, I'm going to ask for like a minute of your time, okay? Um, so a couple months ago, uh, I was involved in a huge panel stream with Prime, uh, Stardust, Mr. Girl, and like a bunch of other streamers. Right? Um, at the end of the stream, I called out one of the stream hosts, uh, Queen Alexa. And I accused her of uh, being involved in grooming a vulnerable underage person. Because um, those are like screenshots and these were the allegations that were floating around at the time. Um, so after this, uh, I took control of the, the Discord server and that the stream was being held on and I deleted it midstream, um, which was a pretty cool moment if I had to say so myself. However, uh, at the time, like my actions were like motivated by what I thought was like righteous anger uh, directed at somebody who had like had done damage to a vulnerable young person um, who was just like looking for a friend. Um, and this led to me, I think, being like totally like set into that position. Right? Because in addition to what I've heard, I'd heard from other people, um, I'd actually spoken to a very close friend of mine, someone I've known for four, like four years or so, four or five years, who had like firsthand uh, knowledge of this, this stuff allegedly happening. Um, so I was totally set into it. It led to like fucking eight hours of arguing with, with Stardust and Bo, who was in Bo Blacks and a ton, ton of other people, right? Um, who were trying to correct the record and, and trying to cl uh, clear Alexa's name. Very nice. So yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was it was a massive shit show. Um, and recently, because uh, I didn't just like leave it right, so I been I've been checking on this and trying to find out more over the last couple months. And recently, I've learned that uh, it actually wasn't true at all, that Alexa actually did nothing wrong. Um, and I participated in slandering this person to tons of people on stream and then deleted their Discord server um, for something that they didn't even fucking do. Right, so uh, I've, I've already spoken to Alexa about this per uh, privately and apologize. But, you know, just so everybody knows I fucked up and it wasn't true. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spam uh, Alexa's new Discord server in the chat if you guys could join that that'd be awesome I've, I've already given her a shout out on my server but um if you guys show alexa some some support you know, that'd be you know useful oh and i'm doobie by the way uh for that i mean <clears throat> we're here for people uh, who are trying to get to the truth of the matter and uh that's, I, I'm not familiar enough with the situation to uh, have an opinion, um, but uh, I uh, trust that Doobie has uh, done his due diligence, and um, I don't want to slander people, so great. Um, yeah, Alex is nice, too. She's a nice, nice person. So. Half-baked takes. Awkward transition. Uh, yeah, introduce no yourself. I'll make, really quick, I'll make it quick, Brad uh, <laughs> I'm Half-Baked Takes. I don't do a lot of streaming, but you can find me on Twitch and on YouTube. Let's get into it. Okay. And uh, last and I'm not sure if least. I I haven't made a decision. Um we have <laughs> Wiggle, same wiggle up there. Wiggle, buddy, thanks for being around. Yeah, so like nine months ago I was involved in not fuck with you, I'm fuck with you guys. <laughs> but like uh 
No, nah, I'm glad to be here. It's always dope to be uh, included in the reverie. I remember when uh, um, I looked at these questions and there was no, I was never going to be a panelist. And then now it's like, it's enjoyable to see that uh, I'm on the panels. Uh, you know, it means that, you know, the, the standards have lowered. And I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you guys this in advance. Um, yeah, I, I'm the main course. Like at the end of all of this, when you go to sleep at night, um, it's going to be like those movies that you can't stop thinking about. You're going to like, wake up in the middle of the night to take a shit or something. And you're going to be like, holy shit, I'm still thinking about what Wiggle said. And that's like, that's what you're going to be left with. Uh, for everybody else, um, you'll, it'll be like a class. It'll be like a math class. It all makes sense. And then on the test, you'll forget what the teacher said. For me, I'm going to be all you can think about all night for the whole week. You're going to be like this guy. It's not even him. It's just the truth that comes out of his mouth. I can't rectify it. It's like, uh, I want to say that it's incorrect, but honestly, I should just prepare to deal with it. Because, like, it's, you can't avoid truth. And that's all Wiggle does. Where we wig one, we wig all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, the only thing I got out of that is that uh, when I'm taking a dump, when I'm trying to pinch off a massive load, right? I'll be thinking of Wiggle. No, that's right. That's the face that comes to mind. Thank you so much. Um, the Taco Bell of debates, I guess. The Taco Bell of debates. <laughs> you heard it here first. When Prime is, when Prime's got a massive load, he's thinking of Wiggle. <laughs> he's thinking of Wiggle. <laughs> well, uh, now that I've scared off my audience members, for whoever's left, uh, let's get started. Uh, topic one, uh, as is often the case, we tell women uh, that they should be constantly aware of their surroundings. And uh, we give advice as uh, don't walk at home at night or don't go over to a man's house. The onus is on the woman to protect herself from being a victim rather than men to stop being victimizers. Do we do a disservice to women by telling them this advice? Is it victim blaming? Uh, does it encourage others to criticize women that fail to follow these guidelines? Uh, and shout out to Stardust. Um, Stardust actually helped me come up with both these topics. So shout out to Stardust uh, for the assistance last night. Um, so a actually, why don't we um, start with uh, Stardust um, and then we'll work our way around everyone else. Stardust. Sure. Uh, are you sure you want to start with me? Because I'm about to go nuclear. <laughs> do you want Do you want me to wait? Uh, to... I, mean, I think I should go last maybe because I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going to go. Wait, I'm going to go nuclear too. <laughs> <laughs> anybody not going nuclear I, i'm convinced this is why i said there shouldn't be a no, like this is what happens right you wanted a no-fly zone and this is what happens like i warned about this i warned you about this i i, I always think my takes are going to be very very ice cold and conventional but then people take it to the next level so i don't know Maybe. Uh, okay all right well we um a nuclear proliferation has happened on this i'll go uh, first yeah. i'll oh. go first if this is what it if this is what it takes. I, I might also have a nuclear take i'm gonna be honest oh my god let me go then i'm curious let me go yeah first. like I'm as a here. leader as a leader i'll just go first because okay, cool. i understand all right how fine we go i love you go I'll ahead go please. second how about that i'll go second thank you <laughs> i'll go yeah. third are we calling places oh now? my god i'm only go gonna fourth? i only <laughs> think up in third place so like i'll thank wick and stardust nobody else Thank you for going second, and thank you for going third. And the rest of you, you're cowards. You're cowards. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that, like, um, I mean, it's already assumed. It's assumed in most, in the vast majority of scenarios that uh, men are victimizers and women are victims. Like, only in specific situations with celebrities and such, they'll be like, all right, the man is a victim. You know, he has a, he, he's a millionaire. He has a lot of money. There's reason for this. But uh, in the vast majority of situations, it's just... Uh, it's thought to be like the the man or the male presenting individual is like a uh, is a uh, victim uh, victimizer, and the female presenting individual is a victim. Beyond that, I would say that um, this is something that everybody has to deal with. Like everybody deals with it. It's like um, men also hear this all the time. They just it's just uh, it's less satisfactory. But men hear this all the time. Um, if you're growing up as a man in America, you're also told 
to like uh, watch out for other men. You're also told to watch around certain men. Uh, you're always told that men are more violent. You 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 get that explanation for why there's so many men in prison. You get that explanation for like men are more violent individuals. You don't want to step up to certain men. They might stab you. They might take actions into their own hands. Men are just violent. They're naturally more violent. You're always hearing this no matter what. It's just that this this kind of like uh, uh, descriptions these descriptions affect women or female presenting individuals more than they affect men. Me hearing that is like. Okay, maybe I could do something about it, but like, okay, men are more violent, but maybe I could do something about it because I'm a man. Whereas like if you're a, a female presenting individual and you might feel like, well, all right, this might affect me more because perhaps I'm also somebody that can't, I can't, maybe physically for, for whatever reason, I can't equate to that man. Maybe I need a firearm or I need something else to protect me. I need something to equalize. I need a great equalizer when I go against uh, like a... a uh, threatening male figure whereas for me maybe my hands are enough maybe I could just wake up in the morning and that's just enough to maybe fend off against another man or something um, I wanted to present that at first and I think like uh, the idea that this is like the advice that don't walk home at night or like don't go over to a man's house uh, is this a disservice to tell women this I think this is just like this is earnest advice it's like we give advice to a society and then we get give advice to individuals so this is advice that you give to like an individual you tell your uh you tell your sister your mother your uh your daughter you tell all the the women in your life uh you will tell this stuff because you care about them you want them to thrive flourish and survive and even if it's against their own country even if it's against their state even if it's against other people because you have this family first mindset so like you would give them this advice even if it was negative uh, for everybody in the country to hear this advice because you put your family over everybody else's families so I will tell like somebody in my family I'd say hey just do this even if it hurts everybody else's family if I know it puts them in the best position possible and this is how like we train people uh, to think in America and this is why we have like so many successful people <laughs> in America sorry <laughs> this, <laughs> this is <laughs> All right. I used to go first. I'm going first. I was like, uh, this is why we have so many successful people in America that uh, also hurt other people and justify it all the time. There. Literally, the only thing I got out of that is that Wiggle thinks that his hands are registered lethal weapons. All right. So let's move on. Against you? <laughs> and against you? At any time. At any time. <laughs> Stardust. All right. Second, I guess. Sure. Yep. Uh, so I think that we've been pushing the too much onus away from women in these situations. Uh, dating and relationship interactions are complicated. Even if I think that woman should be able to walk around naked in the middle of the street and not be assaulted, I know that's not the world that we live in. Uh, in the world that we live in, anyone walking around outside completely naked is going to be perceived as offering an invitation to everybody around them, right? So by not offering younger women practical advice on how their actions will be perceived by men and potential partners, we're setting women up for failure. We are telling women that it's okay even if people in general interpret a message from you a certain way uh, and I mean, you know, you should be able to do whatever you want. Um, uh, we're setting them up to be in an uncomfortable situations where they have the potential to experience rape and or assault. Um, and I would even go so far to say that people who discourage this type of advice towards younger women are being rape makers. You're making the, you are making the circumstances in which a woman will be in a dangerous situation and may experience assault or rape. Congratulations, rape makers. That's my, that's my nuclear take. <laughs> so. Okay. All part on the pain. <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> uh, raise your hand, everyone. All right. Which one of you is a rape manufacturer? Oh. All right. Um, <laughs> <you're>... <laughs> <Not me. laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Let's go to Wick. <laughs> okay. So this is a topic that uh, um, is is complicated. It's not easy to dissect. I've had a lot of conversations about this with people on um, both sides of the issue. Um, for me, my opinion is, is thus, um, that yes, certain people in certain systems will try to use these things, these pieces of advice to blame women. This does happen. That said, 
I think that it is a mistake and it would be a mistake to stop giving this advice. People do not spring from the womb knowing to be distrustful, knowing these things. I hear this all the time, like, oh, don't tell us this. Why are you telling us this advice? We already know this advice. The only reason you know this advice is because someone in your life at some point took you aside and told you this. They educate you. Um, and I am not going to assume that um, everyone in my life automatically just knows this. I think it would be a mistake to do so. That said, there's obviously a way you can do it that will be more palatable uh, to the person that you are trying to help. Um, you can come off as accusatory, infantilizing, and belittling when you do give these advices. So it's important to know your audience and to know how to give said advice. And even if it's warranted, I would never give this advice to someone after the fact. I think that is a terrible thing to do. To give this to advice after the damage has been done, they don't need that right now. They it, it, it does more harm than good. But an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And if you take people aside and we educate people, I think that's a very important thing to do. I do not think it is victim blaming necessarily to say, hey, look, you need to look out for yourself because the only person you can't control in these situations is yourself. We cannot control, and it would be great, it would be wonderful if the men and other victimizers stop doing it. But we have to look out for ourselves. We can only control what we do. And so in these situations, yes, watch your drink when you're at a party. Yes, make sure that you have an exit plan, an escape plan. Um, do not put yourself in dangerous situations. Uh, use wisdom, and that is all. Even if you get hurt, even if you don't do any of these steps and you get hurt, it's still not your fault. I, I I would never say that, but we have to we have to be wise, and that's my statement. All right, um, Ashley, you wanted to go forth. This is not the precedent we're setting. Uh, next time we will just do the thing. But go ahead forth, Ashley. Um, I think my take for the most part has already been said, so I'm gonna do what I do best, and not in the trans angle. <laughs> Common advice that you get as a trans woman, um, that everyone in the trans community will tell a trans woman is. Tell people that you're dating that you're trans, right? Or tell people that you're like having a drink with or you are at a bar with that you're trans, right? And it's not that necessarily you should have to do that in my belief, but like, it's also like, it would be stupid not to because so many people are so, ag people that are against trans people are very aggro about it. So like, it wouldn't be my fault if, I, I got murdered, but like at the same time, there's stuff that I can do to just not have that happen that I could easily do. So like, I think that all this advice is very similar to that. And I think that just in general, like this exists with abusive relationships as well. Like if you've been in several abusive relationships, you're insanely more likely to get into another one. So like telling somebody, hey, maybe you should seek therapy before you go into another relationship is not bad advice and it's not blaming you for being in the previous ones it's not saying that like i don't know just in all this i think that the onus doesn't become on you if you get advice to do something that's preventative it just means that you can take actions that don't um that that don't allow it to happen as easily hmm. can you have a similar uh uh takes here i might have to fight the entire panel on this uh bam uh do i have to fight you too you know i'm gonna want to um my takes a little different from everyone's in here i i think that um i think i generally like it, i could tell for the consensus of the people in this room i'm like all these people are like pretty smart and also pretty scummy individuals <laughs> so we're probably gonna come to like the the truth of the matter but um i think that there i think there are no like decent conversations on sex including this one honestly i still i feel i still feel like the conversation we're having come from a perspective of like um teaching women to avoid the monsters of the world or more the monsters of society. And I don't think that that's, I don't think that that's how these situations happen. I don't think that there's a bad guy that's like rubbing his hands with the like twirly mustache that like, if, if you run into him, you know, you have to like, if you run into him, he's like, he's, the, he's the rape maker. He's the, the raker. <laughs> but, um, I, I think that the, I think, like I said, I think sex is super complicated for everyone on every side involved. And I think a lot of these, um, situations, don't get me wrong. There are absolutely some like, insane people who will like do horrible things to people but i think the vast majority of cases are things where um two people who 
have probably both have issues dealing with their emotions, um, have terrible, uh, pe terrible pieces of communication, and like we, they end up in a situation where one person, generally the women, because of like the power dynamics of society, um, ends up in a situation that's really uncomfortable for her, and she's not like. And like that, that's really unfortunate. But yeah, I, I just think that we'll never get anywhere in society because all women are told to like, all, all men are told not to rape and all women are to told to avoid walking down dark alleys. But that that's not going to get us to the crux of the rape, uh, like uh, the crux of solving the, the actual rapes that happen in society and the actual cases of sexual assault. However, that whatever that word means in 2022. I agree with you mostly, Bam. That makes me sad because I like yelling at you. All right, moving on. Um, let's go to uh, last year's name. Yeah, so we must, we can and must be able to talk simultaneously about, to, or simultaneously to say that people who commit crimes are the ones who are primarily responsible for those crimes. Um, and at the same time say that you, that everyone, should protect themselves from those people, from those dangerous people out there. Uh, these two things are not incompatible, and when you say when you say the latter, you're not denying the former. Okay, we can say them both at the same time, and you can say you can say the latter in a way that is not cruel or or you know is going to damage someone's psyche. I believe that's entirely possible. Um, it's yeah, pe um, people do bad things. And they're responsible for those bad things, but bad people are out there and you should protect yourself. It's just very simple. We wouldn't say that you shouldn't lock your door because it's not your fault if someone burglarizes you. It's the burglar's fault. Of course it's the burglar's fault, but you should still lock your door. Okay? Pretty simple. And it's also not clear to me that, that telling someone that they could have prevented something from happening to them is necessarily going to make them feel worse. When something bad happens to me, I... Um, I don't want to hear necessarily that there was nothing I could do to prevent that because usually when that happens, I'm looking for a way to stop that from happening again. I want to feel like I have control over my life. And to do that, I need to, I need to know that I can somehow stop that from happening again. I need to, and I want to feel like I can do that. And if someone says you couldn't have stopped that, you couldn't have prevented that from happening. They're basically saying you can't stop it from happening again. You have to be afraid of this happening again, and that's that's scary. So, um, so it's not clear that the message, you know, like you, there's nothing you can do about this, is even going to help someone. I, I can think of, you know, speaking of myself, I can think of a lot of times that would have that really just make me feel worse. So let's just consider that too. All right, I'm done. Thank you, last year's name for actually being concise here. Um, half baked takes. <laughs> So I feel like my point has gotten made a lot, um, but I don't think giving advice necessarily um, creates a situation where you're like justifying or creating a world where uh, the thing you're giving on advice on is acceptable or that it is even like really the perpetuated like the perpetuated idea in society. I think like a lot of people have said men know not to rape and the men that are going to commit violent acts um, they're going to do that regardless of that advice we give them typically. So um, providing women with the uh, the best possible uh, advice is probably the best course of action. However, when I spoke to my fiance um, and I gave her this take earlier, she kind of got pissed at me. So I thought uh, there was going to be some other um, opinions on this. So I'm kind of curious to hear what you're going to say here. Prime. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, looks like the the woman is the brains of the operation there. All right. So, <laughs> thank you, buddy. Uh, and finally, uh, our dark lord saver, Divi, please. Uh, Stardust is right, and I think that uh, they're definitely great makers out there. Um, I think you see them all over. You know these uh, the feminist sections of Twitter and Reddit and whatnot, telling women to go out and live their best life and do a bunch of drugs and whatever, whatever, whatever the fuck they want without without worrying about it, worrying about anything. And shaming people who tell women to like, hey, maybe don't go out uh, and get high with some dude you just met. You know, <laughs> maybe don't do that. Um, I think, uh, yeah, start is right. Very simple. Okay, uh, then I guess. And and I gotta add, I think there are some rate makers in disguise on this panel <laughs> who aren't being honest about their position. Okay. Um, so what I, advice do y'all feel like? Oh, okay. Thank Doobie. you, <laughs> thank you for bringing up Doobie Prime. As long as Prime exists, all right. 
as long as Prime profits off of this, all right, I will give women that advice. <laughs> I will go out there and I will tell them to watch their backs, to watch what panels they go on, to watch what happens, to watch what answers and DMs they listen to. As long as Prime exists, all right, he's like Musan from Demon Slayer. He put a seed in men. Because well, he profits off of sexual Stop, assault. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Why are we talking about let me, putting on, let seed me, in let men? Me, let me, like, yeah. Let me give my opinion on this, and then I'll go to you, Stardust. That's homophobic, and, uh, quick, but we and Wick, continue. okay? All right. Um, so uh, my opinion apparently differs from almost everyone here. Uh, I think that one, like, okay, so you know, people think, okay, so we give this advice to women, and well, it seems like they believe there's a step two, in which step two is we go to men and say, don't do these things to women, right? Like. Don't actually take these actions. I don't think it's actually happening. I think for a lot of people, it's not happening, or at least it's not happening in an effective way. Um, uh, uh, when you say that uh, half baked takes, I don't know what your um, I don't know what your fiance was actually thinking, what her or a particular contention is, right? But you say, well, men know uh, know not to rape, but rape is a huge prevalent thing in our society, right? So like uh, that's like that's not the case. It's like manifestly yeah, untrue. No, but that's not because we tell one does not equal the other, right? It's I'm, not. I'm they're not, not doing that in light of that. They're doing that because they don't give a shit about that being. No, a no. I think you don't understand. I think you don't understand rape. I think. No. I think Bam was no, getting closer. It's okay, to, as they rape, they know that they're doing something fucked up. No, you do, I, again. Yeah, I don't think you understand sexual depends. assault. We well, always say is Bam like, don't pin someone down. It. Yeah, I always say is don't men don't like hold someone against a wall and scream in their face and like oh, I'm raping you. Like that's the only thing we ever talk about when it comes to rape, and that's the only thing women know how to like. Women are taught to protect themselves from is the big scary like monster I, person. Yeah, like, I agree. I agree with you, but the 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 prompt of the question is talking about stuff like don't don't walk home at night, don't go over to a man's house that you don't really like that yeah. you're not totally. I don't even think that's the majority of sexual assault. These are bigger than, you know, I mean, that's the majority of sexual assault. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't jump in yet. I want to finish. I want to focus. Don't worry. I'm going to go to you next, Sardis. I promise, right? Sardis, Wick, and then Ashley, okay? So, yeah, like, but that's part of it. The advice, the common advice we give women is not the advice that even is going to protect them, right? It's, this leads to our mindset right now that we've given this advice now we put this out there right that if you didn't follow it well um then it's your fault right or not understanding that um uh the majority of sexual assaults that happen um don't happen in cases where that advice would even be useful right it happens in gray areas it happens where two people who are getting to know each other right um uh interact in a way and one person might leave a feeling extremely like weird about that situation right um uh and that like uh, they thought they gave consent maybe they gave consent maybe they didn't they're not sure the uh the person um uh maybe the male here thoughts they they got uh consent maybe they didn't they're not sure but like something weird happened here and we don't even have words to describe that thing um yeah so, but that's uh, just better sexual education though right that's not well, that's what we're talking about. Not, no, no, no. But yeah, but we're talking about the advice we provide women, not the advice we provide men. Right? No, but that's part but of that's it. advice that's, for women too. Yeah. Yeah. All, all of this is. All yeah, of this yes, together. it's also good advice for women. Yes, obviously. Let's but it, well, let's get a start. Don't worry, we'll get to you. Stardust, um, Wick, and Ashley. So I, I want to make a couple of points here. Um, I would say, um, in response to what last username was saying about um after rape, I would say that they're sure like there are things that that person can learn from the experience but i think it's it's probably it's not so much the advice that like there's nothing you could have done that you should be giving somebody after a rape i think it's more like it happened you know it happened it, it's something that happened and you can't change it you know like it that that's more of like a that's that's more of like a, i think a very neutral neutral kind of like thing you can say to somebody like what does that mean? It's so what does evil. it mean? I mean, it doesn't. I mean, literally speaking, obviously they know that. So, what are you trying to say when you say that? Um, I guess that there's nothing they can do now to change the past, right? It happened. They know that. Like, yeah, of course they know that. 
uh, See, when yeah, I when I hear that, that, it sounds like someone's trying to. Yeah, I, I would I would feel like someone's trying to make me feel worse if they said that to me. I don't want to hear that, right? Like I know I know literally that I can't change the past. Obviously, that just sounds like condescending, right? Well, well no, it depends I on think, the timeline. I actually, I actually don't. So I think that like a lot of people in that situation think that anything that somebody is saying, and especially like right after that, um, anything that somebody is saying is is putting because already there's a lot of shame that comes out of a out of a situation like that there's a lot of shame a lot of like um uh embarrassment that comes out out of experiencing that so immediately like the things that you that somebody says um uh can be interpreted as as um blaming them for something in the past right um it's not so much about blaming somebody for what they've already experienced because we know it already happened, but it, it, it's about like finding a way to phrase these things in a way where it's like, in the future, you can protect yourself. You have the power to protect yourself, right? Um, so it's just very hard. It, I would say like when it comes around that immediately, immediately after that kind of um, situation, I think um, it's just hard to kind of navigate that kind of conversation. In regards to what um, Bam said, I do think that conversations about sex and relationships are complicated and we haven't really figured them out yet uh, as, a, as a whole. Um, but I would push back on what Prime is saying about some of this advice. I do think that these gray areas um, can occur when you're advising a girl to, hey, don't go over to a guy's house unless you're aware of that message that you are giving to him. Don't go over to a guy's house unless you are aware or that you know that, like, um, uh, like you know how he feels about you, right? Because there are going to be plenty of times that you go over to a guy's house who you're friends with, who you trust, and who makes a move on you because you've been drinking or because you spent the day together and he's interpreting that as an invitation. So I don't think that there, it should be anything wrong or anything victim blamey about saying to a woman, Hey, you just spent um, all night with this guy. You've been out drinking. If you go over to his house, he's probably taking that as an invitation. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing wrong with giving uh the advice uh it's just that i think the advice becomes a stand-in for actually dealing with the problems that we're facing um that like that advice doesn't equal much to stop the fact that sexual assaults uh keep happening and that um uh intentionally or unintentionally um oh. and i i think that uh there's <laughs> This focus on this advice is given a weight. It's given a weight, um, and as if it's a, a solution. The advice is not a solution. Uh, it's 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 a band aid. It's I mean again, you, you can give the advice. Up. It's fine, but like it doesn't solve anything. I, I understand well, what you're saying, Brad. You that it does, it's not the, all the. It's not an end all be all. It's not. It's not something that it's. It should not be the end of the conversation. And I'm with you, Prime. And that we do 100% need to have this conversation with men more. We just don't. And I mean, not not to be blaming or anything, but Prime, you phrased this question. You chose this question. You chose this topic. You chose the method on which we were dealing with with this question. This and was Lily Stardust. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> like, Stardust. Have, Hate makers. You're taking the onus away from women at that point. Like, yes, obviously uh the solution isn't to remove the advice it's just to provide more information towards men like we know the problem is men we're not we're not saying women are the problem we're just saying that um the the solution is provide more information to everybody right well, yeah, part of the problem like i'm saying i'll say that no, it, not, it that one, not the like, victims. I feel like, but... again, we are setting up women for failure and we are setting them up to get raped and assaulted and we're creating rape by not giving them good advice. Who, who is not? Who is saying to not give the advice, though? Who is I saying that? I see it all the time. Though, I see it is all it your time. No, my question, hon, this is not my question. This is her question. She, this is the question she brought up, right? So, in which way, right? Like, who's, who, who are you saying 
Um, is, is Sorry, not apologies. Doing stardust, apologies, please. Prime. I didn't mean to blame you for this. It says I credit Stardust that. right there. I, no, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come at it like that. Well, it is a sorry. very common thing. Like, a lot of people say that. By you, though, Prime. Otherwise, I would have taken full credit for this question. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, I came up with the question because I wanted to drop my hot fucking takes. Okay, I see it on Twitter. I see it on Twitch. Okay, I see, like, fucking lefty Twitch saying, like, oh, no, you can't advise a woman to not do that because you're putting the blame on her. I'm not putting the blame on her. I'm trying to give her proactive advice and not create a situation in which she's going to get raped. Jesus so, fucking I'm, I'm Christ. Heated. Right. Can, I, can I just I'm ask? Why you come so, after me for the I'm weed shit, you. but you talking about I'm, lefty Twitter. Yeah, bro. right? Come on, come <laughs> on. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm with continue. you, Prime. Yeah, well, I'm with you, Prime, Twitter. when you say that this doesn't solve the problem. Of course it doesn't solve the problem. But do you not believe that this common sense advice can reduce the problem even if it's just even if it's just by five percent is that not worth doing is that not still I, worth doing i wait, understand before you do i'm going your high horse here i i literally already said yeah. it's i'm fine with the advice okay. Okay. <laughs> Actually, people, you're just gonna have to jump in i'm gonna be honest a, with you. a lot <laughs> of the hand not gonna get you nowhere i and and, and and this bothers me on a level that that whenever i do try to talk about this conversation we can't get past this point to get to the vent because we get stuck on this point because everyone starts complaining. I, why aren't you talking about men? We'll get to them. Don't worry. But we have to preface. But we don't. With this. That's the thing. That's the thing right there. We don't actually get to men. And we, we should. We, we uh, like so, th this is we my problem. Do. Is that like it's it? Um, uh, this advice tends to be thought terminating, right? That um, we don't go. Uh, uh, we assume the problem is uh, solved. Well, not we. Not I don't put you guys. All right, I don't put what would you what you think. Um, but society does so, right? Um, and uh, you you say or not you say, um, but people say that uh, men uh, do get this advice. They do. Uh, they are confronted, um, but they aren't, and their behavior um, is allowed in big ways and small ways to like fester, um, in which uh, they uh, uh, have like um um uh, uh for so many men like there's a bit of an impunity in how they behave towards women that creates a more dangerous envi environment right both like when it comes to like sexual assault like it in itself but like there's a whole like spectrum of terrible things that can happen before then um, so let's talk about it then right now let's talk about ways that guys uh inadvertently because when half big take said it that people oh they know when they're writing i strongly disagree with that the, a lot of the problem comes is that guys do not realize what they are doing is wrong they do not realize what they are doing is actually violating someone's consent and i think that yes that's a very important conversation so i'm willing to have that right now ashley's waiting ashley half big takes little um, that's directed at Halfback Tech, so if he wants to go before me, he can. Yeah, so really quick, and I'll be quick, Ashley. I, like, I'm not saying those gray zone, like, we don't need to educate men on, like, that gray area more, because that, I think, is where we all agree the biggest problem wise is where um, guys think they're almost doing something okay, or they're pushing those those bounds, and, like, the uh, 20 no's and a yes still means yes uh, type mentality. I do think getting away from that is a good thing. However, I was talking about those clear cut, uh, somebody's walking alone in the middle of the night and they go out and they like assault a woman. Like, it, 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 my bad. I do know that there is a, quite a bit of nuance there and I just wanted to make that clear, Wick. Okay. Um, I, I am aware of the problem that we have with that gray zone and men not understanding yeah. what consent. I understand, but to so, Prime's point, like we we need to discuss this because this is oh, a problem. I I agree, and that's okay. what I, that was that was my initial point was we sure. need to educate okay. men more specifically on this shit because that's where that problem was. Let's go to um uh, uh, Ashley, then Wiggle, then Tilly. So um just to talk about like advice that we could give to men, I mean like. I've gone outside at night, right, in the city and been fine, right? I've gone over to somebody's house to play D&D &D that I didn't know that well and been fine. But the, the only time that I think I've come closest to sexual assault was I was in a sexual encounter with a guy. And um, I wasn't ready to actually have sex, but he wanted to. And I wasn't saying no, I wasn't saying anything. 
And he actually stopped himself because he saw me start crying. And I think that that was like a very mature man that realized what was going on. Even though I hadn't explicitly said no, I just wasn't ready for that. And he was able to identify that and completely back off. And I very much respect him for that. And I think that that's the type of place where um, that's, a, that's where rapes happen. When people don't realize that they're pushing consent, right? I don't think that guys know that they're... That, like, because there was no no there, right? I didn't tell him no, but, like, he thought that he had his, my consent, and he realized that he didn't. And I think that the reason why he realized is because I wasn't for it. I wasn't excited about it. There's, like, a certain... There's a certain consent that's not necessarily only made by a yes. There's another level of consent where you actually want to do it. Where I think you can convince a woman to say yes, but... It's a lot harder to convince a woman, or it's a very different thing for a woman to want to. And I think that that's where the distinction is that a lot of men don't really know. Mm, I, yeah, sense. I think a lot, like a lot I, of people, half a takes, um, and then uh, sorry, not half a takes. I uh, wiggle, sorry, wiggle, um, and then Doobie, and then uh... yeah, I think um, I think Americans want this, like uh, as half baked takes were saying, this like gray area. I like that term, uh, like. I think like Americans want that shit. Um, other other countries probably want it as well. I can only speak to America. We want that wide realm, like, and we fight against it all the time. It's like masks. We fight for that gray area to be very large, and these are the casualties of that. And then we're talking about reducing those casualties. We're talking about we don't want sexual assaults, etc. Um, but we don't want to regulate this. That's beyond. We do not want that. Americans don't want that. They want this place to exist where women and men will mingle with each other and then sexual results can happen. And we want there to be this gray area because we think uh, uh, it brings us more utility than it brings negatives. And then we talk about reducing the harm, reducing the harm from that environment. I think that's very important to focus on uh, because when I hear things like what, what Prime's talking about or other people are talking about on that side, I hear like, uh, you know, we're not solving the major problem. Uh, we can't solve the major problem uh, because we've decided not to. Or we've decided that government can only be involved to a certain degree, and then we cut them out, and this is between individuals, and this is between what we tell people, advice we give, how you're supposed to act in these environments. And I think as there long as that continues... Country? Is there um, in America, country where the nation is involved in individual perhaps, sexual But environment? I'm not a citizen of every country. I'm a citizen of America. So I can only talk about, like, uh, you know, living in New York, living here. Perhaps the whole world is like that. Um, is anyone I don't know. proposing legislation for that? I don't know. I, in America, yes. There's like legislation that's proposed to like uh, protect victims of sexual assault, I imagine, all the time. Yeah. But Wiggle, would you say like, would people are yeah. or would you say people are educated enough on what that gray zone is? My point is that people aren't educated enough on like the gray zone and we should probably talk about it a lot more because it's so misunderstood but i'm curious i would agree i would agree i agree 100 percent on that i think that uh you tapped on this and i think uh um ashley tapped on this and a few others uh but you guys are the only people i can remember uh the idea of like men not knowing what to do because they're getting conflicting messaging from like other men in society until they get something like a woman crying in front of them until they have like something, an emotional trigger that lets them know something is wrong. Because they're told, hey, like, wrong is not no. Wrong is not now. And so they, they're, they're told these things and then they get an emotional response like somebody crying or someone like pushing them, a shove, something like this. And then everything breaks down. They, all, everything else is just, does is less important. Right now they realize what I'm doing is wrong. And uh, that's that's kind of fucked up, you know. It's fucked up that that's the situation that a lot of people are in. And I do agree with you that like we'd want to educate people more so that doesn't happen. But even when people are educated to that point, uh, where's the end of education? Is it just uh, is it just a continuous? I I, I think it's just a continuous well, fight. I think you'll never think end. educate them in what? Like, are we sure that we actually there is some sort of answer to that that we could teach everyone? And if they knew it, then. Like, it's not entirely clear to me that we we even have answers to those questions. Like, you know, like exactly, you know, basically the education that I got was basically if, you know, if, if a woman says no, then no means no. But if they don't say no, then it's, you know, it then what? 
that's a, like what what do i what kind of affirmative uh consent do we need what do i need affirmative consent for how often do i need it do i need to like ask like all this all this stuff that is is not clear we actually know the answer to so before we talk about educating people maybe we need to talk about what exactly are we going to educate them what well, are we going to tell them it's because we have a society that just, just, just to add on just to add on real quick um i i, I think also a, an important issue to to talk about is the rules are still changing around like what is yes. what what men are supposed to be doing, what the initiating partner, partner is supposed to be doing. The rules are not set in stone. The rules are constantly changing. The one thing that we know for sure is that we can give women advice to be protecting themselves. And we can give men advice to protect themselves. But when uh, the rules uh, are still up in the air for everything around relationships, um, it's it's it, we can advocate for more education i 100 percent am in agreement with that we can advocate about talking about gray zones more but again because the rules are still changing and because we're still figuring this out together the the most important advice is going to be proactively protecting yourself i i think doobie um bam wick um anyone else all right um yeah, so I, I I think even even on this panel, right, we're not really being honest about what the gray area is, uh, because honestly, like no doesn't always mean no. Sometimes mean no means I want you to try because it you know turns me on when you when you push me. Right? Sometimes well, and this is, is for is... men and women, right? Yeah. I do this shit sometimes for my girlfriend, right? Where she will show up and try to grab my dick. I say no, leave me alone. I'm working. She keeps doing it. It's, it's really funny. It's, we end up like actually like I physically trying to fight her off my dick and eventually I let her have it. Right. Like sometimes you just do and, I, and she does the same fucking thing, literally like wrestling to like get my hand into her pants. Right. Because it's and the entire time she's saying no. But if I stop, she didn't get mad at me. And I know this because it doesn't actually mean no. And people do that in relationships. They do that on in first like like uh, in like one eyed stands. So like. It's not as like simple as oh she see, she says no it means no or he says no it always means no, right? Like that's not that's not really how people operate unfortunately. It's not that simple. And sometimes yes isn't actually yes. Yes is I'm afraid so I'm gonna let you do it, right? So like, um, I don't know. I don't I don't think we're like, I think we got to be honest about like the the intricacies of this shit because it's not as like clear cut, right? Um, and I, I don't think it'll ever be. So I think yeah, before so we talk, wanting before it to we be, start think... talking about getting the law involved and the government involved, like figure out, let's have try to settle on some social norms before we start, you know, talking about throwing people in jail for violating norms. I I, well, I agree with you, uh, last year's name, and I agree with what Doobie is saying. Uh, before we go to Bam Wick and then Hoppick takes, um, but uh, I I think what you, what you're hitting on, um, Doobie, is that there's more there's more than one access access here right um it's not simply consent right and consent you know you, you get the thing right you get the consent right even understanding that consent is like sort of on the spectrum like fucking everything else is right um uh yeah that there's more to it right um uh there's like how they feel about that relationship do they feel safe in that relationship um do you feel safe to um express yourself to your partner um if you uh can then you will right um, if not, right, if you think there will be consequences, um, then you can say, you'll say yes, but um, maybe not. Um, you, uh, are you, uh, able to, uh, joke, you guys are honest about, um, your sexual, um, uh, desires that, uh, a way if you can do that, um, where you can freely, uh, say that you can joke around, like what do be unfortunately subjected us to, right? Like, is that a thing that you can do, um, within your relationship? Not everyone is like that. Um, so I think there's so many other um ways that we have to judge these individual situations and to last year's next point uh, i don't know how well this could ever neatly fall into a law um but uh let's go to bam and then wick yeah i don't think that um like the well stardust said that like we need to give everybody good advice but like uh yeah, advice to protect themselves but i don't think the advice we give men helps them protect themselves like when because the advice we give men is to like get the enthusiastic yes i've even seen it like 12 times in the chat since we've been here and no one says yes i do agree to this thing and then we do the next thing like it's not and, like there will be one person laid in the history of <laughs> sex like it's just not it's not sexy it's not sexy to get a thumbs up but it like but we can talk about the concept of like 
reaffirming things in the middle like are you okay are you comfortable does this feel good like there's there's way there's a and there's like a mm -hmm, there, you know like there's a a natural way of, of following through these uh sexual encounters or that i think people who have real sex in real life like understand um the second part of that is crap i think that like generally speaking we um generally speaking the way we that we talk about protecting women is I don't know. Go to Wick. I'll, I'll come back to me. There was a second point. Uh, I, I, I don't have real sex in real life, so I, I wouldn't understand. Um, let's go to Wick. He's been waiting a bit. Half Baked Takes, uh, Stardust. Okay, so uh, there, this has opened up a can of worms, but I think it's amazingly important to talk about. The Probably the most important thing to talk about is it all comes down to communication and to being able to communicate properly with your partner or partners. And unfortunately, and this is going to be perhaps my hottest take of the night, this is why casual sex and the, the culture surrounding it is dangerous and it creates so many problems and so much risk. Because these problems that are exacerbated when you don't know someone, when you've just met someone, you're still learning how to communicate with them. You're still learning what they mean when they use certain words because not everyone means the same thing you don't know how they are communicating yet you haven't had the time to find out and a lot of these problems will go not all of them obviously but a lot of them go away when you are with someone for an extended period of time before you engage in sexual relations and it, it solves these issues. You're able to talk better. You're able to communicate better. And these are all things that improve the dynamic of a relationship in, in a way that's just so important. Like we talk about social norms. We talk about how confusing all of this is. And it is. But that, and, and there is no societal standard really when it comes down to it because I've been in situations. Well, I'll, I'll tell you about a situation. I was very young when I was very young and, and young wick was, was first trying to get some. Okay. And, uh, so I, I was with a girl and we were making out and, and she's like, oh, no, no. I don't believe it. Uh, Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Believe it or not. Uh, she's like, no, no, no. Uh, I'm a good girl. I don't do this. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's but always a lie. Two minutes later, two minutes later, she's like, good, good girls like bad boys. What the, what the fuck was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to do with that? I, so it was it, okay. confusing to young women. It's always a lie when they say So you're a and, bad boy is what I got from and, you. Yeah, well, yeah, and anyway, so, so what I'm saying is that everyone's going to have an individual standards on this. Everyone's going to have a different way of doing it. And you have to protect yourself, gang. Like women and men both communicate with your partners. Be able to understand what they mean when they use certain words. That's like the only solution that I can see. Anyway. Oh, can I? Can I, I remember my point. Can I say it before I proceed? Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Number one, like, w like outside of being like physically bigger, we don't even know if necessarily men are um that much like are that much more likely to be sexual assaulters. Like, I think that the reason we we live in a society that um that men that men seek consent and women say yes or no if the, if the society men are always like are the, always the ones that are initiating men are going to always be the ones that cross the line because there's only one side and like one side going for it so like obviously men are going to be the people to cross the line because women don't uh, initiate with men, men in, as often also the second thing i think there's a lot of cases in sex that people um get uncomfortable like a lot of times in sex people get uncomfortable or feel like they're in a situation that's like ah crap this is weird to back out of even myself i remember i've been um i've done a, uh been in hook uh done a hookup before where like you drive over there like you've been talking to him you drive over there and then you get there and it's like ah crap this is kind of a catfish or ah crap i don't even know if i really want to do this but I already use the gas. They're already here. This would be a really effed up thing if I got up and left right now, like, or to say no right now. So you go through with it. And afterwards, you don't feel great about the situation. And I think that, like, and this, sure, this happens with men, but I feel like this also happens with women who are like, I'm in this guy's house. If I say no right now, what's going to happen? This feels really weird. Maybe I should just go through with it. And then, like, they, they don't really feel great about the encounter. Okay. Um, let's go to uh, Half Baked Takes. Um, Ashley, then do me, please. So, Wick, like, two things like one 
I wholeheartedly agree with you on the communication aspect of this. I think the education that we're all talking about when we say like, let's educate men, let's educate. I think that education is communicating and like learning how to pick up on the vibes that Bam was talking about. Like that is just, I don't know how we do it because I'm not an educator, but I think that's the way you go about this is you teach young men and young women how to communicate on a uh, uh, communicate better. However, as a person who um, enjoyed casual sex and is an advocate for casual sex, like in a safe manner, um, I I don't think saying all casual sex is bad because you don't know how to. I communicate. said it's dangerous. It's, I want to be very I, clear. I said it's dangerous. Not that you shouldn't do it. Not that you should. It's bad. Not that it's immoral. Like, but that it is necessarily real. more dangerous. It is more dangerous. Than uh, sex with someone in a, in a committed true. relationship. Yeah, that's probably true. And obviously, just like educate yourself and know that there are predators out there. So just know who you're talking to. Okay. Um. Did, uh, Ashley, then do me. Um, I'm not actually sure that casual sex is more dangerous. I just think you need to be the type of person for it. Um. I think that like why would you um, why would you say that why would you say it's not as dangerous? Um, I think that like if you're out there engaging in casual sex and you're very comfortable with it, right? Which I'm not saying everyone that does it is, but if you're generally more comfortable with it, I don't see that as a dangerous spot. I actually see um, engaging with one partner in certain circumstances being way more dangerous. How so but then casual sex is more dangerous. Is this the people that take part in it are more experienced? Um, yeah, and I they take the, more precautions. And they well, take yes, I, I think yeah. that inherently you would take more precautions because because you recognize it's more dangerous, so you take more precautions. And because you take more precautions, perhaps it is less likely. Yeah, I might, I might agree to but, that. But, but I would say that the more dangerous situations are like longer relationships, where or, or like even short form relationships where you get attached to somebody, and like they kind of push you into those sexual encounters right early on. Like, I think that that's way more common to be boundary pushing than casual sex where you take those precautions. I think that's harder to take those precautions in a relationship. It seems to be true statistically. Like, uh, like it is, it is, I think, yeah, casual counters are more dangerous necessarily, but it seems to be true in like what plays out in real life is situations involving well, someone. And, and I mean, regardless though, they're going to be because dangerous you let your guard down. unique to Because you let your guard right. down. Casual encounters, count, casual encounters aren't absent of people you trust. But I think we're, I think we're, 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 um, uh, we're conflating things incorrectly. I, I think casual encounters can still in, it, involve people that you trust, like a fuck buddy, yeah, or somebody but that you're friends there. with, somebody that you're, somebody that like that you're chill with, or even just like, um. Uh, even just like like the practical advice we give is not even necessarily for this relationship dynamic. It's just about like if you go out with friends and you and and you've spent the night with some you know partying with somebody. If you go over to their house, you're probably sending a signal to them of some yeah. sort. Yeah. So and so I these think are... that you can engage in that safely. Like I, yeah. I think that you would take precautions, even if it's a friend. I think that a relationship's very different because like I don't know. I, I've I've been in um sorry I've been in a good amount of abusive relationships over the last couple of years uh, they've been hell um but yeah in those like I've not felt comfortable saying no and maybe that's because obviously I'm not in a great situation but like that's when my boundaries have gotten pushed it would never be just some random person right mm -hmm. or I even just a friend I'm, I'm, I'm doing one if I'm doing one like one encounter with a guy, even if they're my friend, right? Like if it's a one-off, I don't think my boundary is going to cross this. So much maybe, as maybe I, tend agree. I tend to disagree. So I think that it, it's it's not exclusive to long-term relationships, and it's not exclusive, it's not exclusive. to short short-term relationships I'm not either. It's exclusive. Oh, no, I know you're not, but I'm saying I think it happens in both. I think it happens in both. I think it where... happens in both, but there's more of a risk in long-term. Well, they they haven't fucked you yet, so it's like in the casual relation, uh, like if you're you're hooking up with someone. They want to fuck you, so like well, they haven't fucked you. It's yet. a casual relation. It, it, there may be a communication error where somebody thinks 
that they are going over just to hang out and the other person thinks that this person's coming over to fuck, right? Yeah, that like, happens I, there's, enough. That there's, happens for sure, but there's precautions that you generally take. Yeah, them. and these yeah. are the precautions, You're gonna be more these precautions. Are the precautions that we, we, we give to people, right, who are engaging in these. But if people can't take those precautions because there are a lot of women who are afraid of confrontation, who are afraid of saying no, we would advise them, if you are afraid of saying no, if you, if you are not in a place where you feel like you can communicate effectively, then you probably shouldn't be engaging in a, a casual relationship. Okay, I yeah, want to be I would very clear, just that. real quick. I just want to be very clear that my advice is primarily intended towards men here when I say it's very important to be able to properly communicate and recognize when your partner is properly communicating with you. Um, and, and, and it is important for women too. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to create this false kind of dichotomy here. But um, uh, when I also say when I say uh, casual sex, uh, I, I mean like hookups. I'm not talking about someone you've known for years and, and, and suddenly it becomes uh, more than just friendship. I'm talking like hookups, one night stands, going on Tinder, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to clear that up. Thank you. Yeah. And you know what you're getting into with that. Like there can be like, you know what you're getting into with that. If you get into a relationship with somebody, right? And they push you really hard for sex, right? I feel like, like that's a you? lot harder to say no to than a so, casual. It's like, so I, I just, I just really quick, I just want, I just want to push back against this, Ashley, because I don't think like, like for example, I could be going out to hook up, to to, to go to the bar, and I want to pick up a woman, I want to bring her home, and I want to have sexual relationships with her. The woman who is there might not be there for the same thing, and if I do not recognize, and if I cannot recognize that she is not there for that same thing. It's going to create a lot of problems. Oh, well, yes, and I agree. It's and, very dangerous. And yeah. I think it can be dangerous, but that's my point. Like, if you're going to somebody's house, right? Or if you're going into these casual or, late, or these casual sexual encounters, you probably are a lot more comfortable just walking away because there's... If you leave, right? Now, yes, if the, if there's da if the guy's being dangerous with you, this is a very different situation. But I think we would agree this is a dangerous situation. We're assuming not a bad actor here necessarily, like, right? Yeah, and that's what the me and you are talking about right now. That's, but, but that's, I, I, here's you know. the thing. I would say, I would say that yes, you may be right as somebody who's more experienced in those encounters. But what I have seen is that a lot of women feel pressured to be partaking in hookup culture because hookup culture is the only dating culture that, or at least it is the most. It is the most widespread dating culture today, right? That is generally that's that seems like what it is. It seems like everybody's partaking in it, well, and it seems like it's like kind of like a seems kind of like a rite of passage for a lot of people, right? To partake in like this hooking. And let's not forget, there's, 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 there's no actually a hoe. Like, there is apps with profit incentives to get you to participate in this culture. So it is an incentivized. It's yeah. something that is being pushed every by corporations. Every app is designed for this. That, this it, that's what it feels like this, to me. I feel like when I was when I was younger and my friends were were you know getting into the age where we were going out and dating people, I thought for a long time that I had to put out or nobody would love me. Like it's like that's like it's toxic. It's really toxic. And so um, so and it wasn't just me. I knew plenty of other people who who thought that they had to put out or they had to like they had to make their bodies available to people or those people wouldn't even think about about loving them or or liking yes, them. Yes, and I right? agree. But and you know where that happens a lot? Relationships. But if, Longer term relationships. Well, even shorter term sure, relationships. Sure. I'm not, That's I'm where not that happens a lot because there's really a pressure actually, to stay in them. You. I'm not disagreeing with you on, okay. on longer term relationships that it happens there. I'm saying that I think you're underestimating the prevalence of it in I am saying it probably happens more in short-term relationships uh, and like semi-long-term. I, I don't know if we like really need to have like a couple weeks. A debate about like whether you know casual dating is is worse than long-term relationships. Obviously, long-term relationships can be really fucked up and toxic. I think we we all would agree to that. Yeah. And and there's but there's also unique um, dangers that are unique to to casual encounters with someone who you don't know very well. Like the less you know someone, the greater chance that there's gonna, they're gonna surprise you in something, some way that's that's gonna be dangerous. So like there's different kinds of dangers here. 
I don't think we need like trying to weigh like which one is worse. It's kind of comparing well, apples and oranges, right? I, I, yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, trying to obviously, going to depend on your men, experience. If we're trying I, I, to give really, advice to men, I, really I think that our advice. As a man, I feel like I, really I should have to communicate, think... like what Wick was saying. I should have the. I, I, okay, so I really don't think one is worse than the other. I, that, that's that. That's kind of what I, I, I'm trying to communicate. Trying to is that massively it's, depend on the I think that they're different and more than I'm do be the line, but I know we can. So Wiggles has a direct response. Um, I can't tell yeah. the difference between you two. Um, I have the direct response, um, uh, so I want to uh, hear that, and then I yeah, do want to go to like, duty. Yeah, like I'm, I'm like this is the fucking this is the this is like the crux of relationships. Relationships are built off confrontations. Like you're in your, if you're in a relationship, like you're going to be arguing or having confrontations until you stop. Like you're choosing to be tethered to somebody where you're going to push boundaries until you realize where that per what that person thinks about something before you even have to ask anymore. Like before you get to the point where you know what they want to eat, what they you know what they want, what they do in the morning, etc. You you have those confrontations. Like your best friendships are friendships you have with people where like you've come at odds many times and then you understand each other. So that's just like part of it is like yes, like if you're in a relationship with somebody, a long form relationship. They're going to, like, if they like to have sex, they're going to pressure you to have sex. And then if you don't like to have sex as much, you're going to pressure them not to until you come to an agreement on that situation if you're planning on being with them forever or you're going to break yeah, apart. Yeah, but the, the woman side of this is it's very scary, right? Like, I, I think me and Star Wars agree on one thing, which is the woman side of this is if you don't go for that sex, you are going to get abandoned and nobody's ever going to love you. Right? But yeah, the male side really, of this, the male the side of this, that's what it feels angry. like as a woman. He, the, or, or he's going to get angry, right? Because we've known, like, some people associate yeah. confrontation with life or death situations, right? Yes, but, and I think that's where, that's where men need the education if we're talking about what to educate men on. Like, I think that we really need to talk about, lo like, short-term slash long-term relationships rather than casual sex because, at least in casual sex, it's like... I, I think that's what, where, why like, at the expense of mm -hmm. why not both? Yes, why can't we talk I think about both, both, but I think that it's taught casual sex is like talked about more. I don't think we is talk it? about longer yeah. term. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Yeah. It definitely Wait, is. But like, it what was... are the what are the benefits? Uh, no, what are the benefits you can talk... for? What, what are Did the benefits have for sex men? Ed in high school, and, sex uh, ed in high school had like uh, education about um, abusive relationships and like and things no, like that. No, mine didn't. <laughs> Mine did. But, but mine what, did not. Mine had what, advice on casual sex. It did not what, have that on a no. music relationship. Huh. Um, go so ahead. Uh, relationships uh, are really, yeah, really look complicated. Look, look, I wouldn't expect it, to be it, he's, he's, he's got he's got explaining hands out, so I want to make sure he can do it. <laughs> it's like, but yeah, like, the, the, what are the benefits for men to engage in long form relationships, and what are the benefits for women to? I personally believe that there's less benefits for men to engage in long form relationships. There's just less benefits for them. One of those benefits is to have like a consistent sexual partner. That's why like, since there's less benefits, this is one of those benefits. There's more pressure there. There's other pressures that are placed on men when they're in long form relationships. There's pressures that they're placed on, on them by many women, which is like to be able to provide, to have more money, to take job opportunities they may not want in order to provide for the family. Whereas they may place the opposite pressure on women in relationships they may say don't take job opportunities you don't have to you don't have to have as much ambition we'll do this stuff and it's vice it's vice whoa, versa whoa, whoa, no i want women to work for me i want them and to guess provide. what There's... i want them to give me money i would love your it. answers aren't he being to, heard he wants to be your a camp answers aren't being heard. okay go ahead uh let's go to uh db then last year's name has something to say yeah just really quickly on, on what wiggle was saying i, I think i think that's uh something that people don't talk about enough, right? So what men are taught about relationships is that they're meant to take on like the burden of providing like food, housing, comfort, et cetera, um, while sacrificing their own desires, right? And uh, whether it's like long working hours or taking the shit position at short, at, uh, at work uh, or, or shit, uh, shift at work because, you know, you, you got to buy your wife a new gift or whatever the fuck, working overtime, whatever the fuck. Um, and it, we're taught that if you don't do those things, then you're a failure as a man. Right. And if your wife cheats on you, it's because, hey, you couldn't pleasure her well enough. Right? That's, that's your fault, too. Right. So I think people don't really talk about that. Um, th there's a ton of pressure that goes on men. People also don't talk about the fact that women sexually assault all the fucking time. 
right? And physically assault. They, they punch men, they scratch men, they slap men, they grab men's dicks. And it's just not reported because if, as a man, if you report that kind of shit, you're seen as a pussy. You're, you're like a bitch, right? Because you reported some woman grabbing your dick without permission. It happens all the fucking time. So I, I think that there's too much focus here on like, on men being like like the the aggressors or and whatever the fuck it's true that you know men physically generally are gonna have a are gonna it's gonna be easier for them to intimidate a woman to uh you know um uh rape somebody if it comes to that right but it happens the other way too right it could be you know you're, you're talking to some girl she wants to have sex and you're worried that if you say no she's gonna go around and tell everybody that you didn't have sex with her because you're gay right some it's as simple as that right so like i, I feel like this is all very like it's far more two-sided than we're making it out to be. Are you saying it's too gyno focused? Yeah, I agree. Is that what you're saying? I, yeah. I agree with you. I think one of the main things is also when I talk about these proactive, like um, offering young people practical advice on how to protect themselves. It's not just for women, right? We should be giving men the same advice about how to protect yourself, right? How to make sure that, that you are... Um, entering these relationships in a healthy way because I've seen too many men as well who get taken advantage of and you're right um, uh, reporting sexual assault as a man is a much harder experience so uh, last year's I also think we okay, okay. last year's name then bam then uh, Wick uh, we're having like a dozen different discussions here um, pick, pick, pick a topic one. and I'll give you I'll tell you something about it. Um, uh, okay so you know what? Come back to me. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. We'll go to Bam. Um, then we'll tr uh, check with last year's name. If he's still not ready, we'll go to Wick, and then we'll check him with last year's name again. I want that opinion. Bam. Good plan. Mm, yeah, I think that, um, like, I think we have to do a better job of, like, teaching women to deal with the rejection. Like, uh, that's all, like men, it's, it kind of comes as a part of the game. Like, don't get me wrong, men, this rejection does suck, but, like, we come to accept is like you're you're gonna you ask for a girl's number you approach women and sometimes you get rejected and you move on from that but women like even it's came up in this conversation women say like oh if you don't put out then you may get rejected and I, as if that's the has to be the worst thing that could possibly happen to you in your life and if like and you have to go into like a dark depressive state because some guy said he didn't want you like i think that that has to become like a normal human interaction they're like oh what what if he's you know what if me saying no makes him not like me then and that, that doesn't make him a bad person either because maybe that's what he want it but like you just have to be okay with sometimes like well i think being for a woman, rejected but no, I, just finish up because i know we always like whenever we say like whenever we hear about these situations like oh yeah like i told the guy no and then he broke up with me like and they're like oh he was it's his, his loss baby he was a horrible person like maybe he was just didn't want what you wanted and he moved on with it like these none of these none, no people involved have to be bad no one has to be the bad guy no one has to be the demon like just uh yeah i think Deal with, be rejected just it's okay be rejected it's fine in our society though like women are really given like a lot like a very clear time that like they're in their quote-unquote prime and then after that they're just kind of like thrown under the bus like women over 40 like if you try dating as a woman over 40 you're just seen as like a very out there thing in our society and even like i i don't know like my experience on dating apps has very much been um, men that will give okay openers and then feel like they're entitled to you, right? When they're not, like, yeah. great. Can you explain that? And you kind of have to, like, give in to that or you won't get with anyone because it feels like everyone's, like... I don't, I don't know what you're uh, saying. Can like, you explain Like, damn, you that? get openers. Yeah, that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> it's dating app culture. No, no, I know culture. that that's what it feels like, but, like, the difference is that on my end, it's, like, I actually want to have, like, a meaningful relationship when it's my, like, it, it's sex that's kind of like what's pushed on like off, sorry i'm i'm fumbling words um the sexual aspects of me are what people want right and i feel like in a lot of early relationships you get pushed into that but then there's also the fear of if you don't do that no one will ever love well i don't think i don't think think of time women look at dating apps for love at, love right? you sexually you can get well, love from people that's well not well wick was kind of talking about like that, that right oh, oh, that was what before yeah. we get to that, um, and I'm sure we'll go jump back into it. Um, let's get to uh, last year's name, see if we got. Okay. Um, well, so we started off talking about, about blame, basically. So what can I say about blame? Um, 
I, I, I do think that we're, we're in a phase um, where the social norms are kind of up in the air and, uh, and it's not clear to everyone where they are. And some people are acting, acting like it is clear and we just need to educate everyone, but that's not quite true. Uh, we can see that the norms have changed over time and they're still changing. Um, one thing that we should keep in mind is that it, there's, there's going to be, wherever the norms are or end up, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a margin where people can have bad experiences and get hurt, even though nobody did anything wrong, right? There's going to be an area sort of in the middle, um, where everyone did follow the rules and did what they were supposed to do, but they still had a bad experience and got hurt because that's, that's just how it is. You can't have, you can't have something where no, where if anyone gets hurt, it's going to be someone's fault because that's going to be too dangerous. No one's going to be able to do do anything in that case because it's too easy to get hurt and no one will take the risk that they'll get blamed for it. So we're going to have to have, um, some tolerance for that. Um, and, uh, I mean, all this stuff about men and women and our roles and, and dating, uh, I mean, we're talking about every little thing here. Um, communication. Yeah. Communication is important, but it's very easy to say to someone, uh, just communicate and be honest and talk, talk about everything. We all know that that's very difficult and it's especially difficult when your partner is not doing it, right? I mean, the only one is, is willing to be, to, to be direct and communicate when your partner is like, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything. I just want to like smile nervously and let you make all the decisions. Then it's, then that makes it really hard. So, so, uh, and even if your partner is communicating, it's still hard to do it. It's, you know, everything, everything we see, all our, like we kind of get our initial training for this from like movies and television, right? Where two people just look into each other's eyes and without a word, they just fall into the bed and start fucking, right? That's, that's how we see it in the movies. And that's kind of how we were initially trained to do it. And obviously that doesn't really work very well in real life. Um, and it's actually kind of risky because you could, you know, do that and find out, well, I didn't really want to do that. Um, but I didn't know how to say anything. So, um, so we're, we're, you know, learning how to actually talk about it is, is easier said than done, which doesn't mean we shouldn't try to do it, but it's, it's tricky. There's a lot of weird dynamics in there and we can't just ignore that. We can't just ignore our instincts and our training and everything that pushing us away from that. Um, so yeah, I, I, rather than just saying like, you must communicate, I'd like to talk about like, how do you communicate? How that's do you do it in a way that's, that's, that's practical and, and people can actually do it and you can do it even, you know, can help your partner do it and where it's sexy, right? Oh, that's, that's a, that's an excellent, um, uh, course of discussion here, uh, but it, it is so in depth. It, it's something that we can't, we can't cover entirely on the, on the very little bit we have here Why not? on the Let's prime guy panel, because right again, now. it's just so different. I think one of the most important things to do though, is like you said, to recognize when communication isn't actually happening. When the person isn't actually telling you what they actually think or feel, um, and that it can be hard to recognize, but there are certain cues and certain clues that most people, and this is again where it gets dicey because not everyone's going to act in this way, that everyone's going to engage with this in the same way. Um, but there are things that we can generalize to a degree, but again, there's danger in even that because everything is happening on such an individual basis here that it's hard to have clear cut fast like guidelines for how to better communicate and that is why i think that you have to spend time with someone a significant amount of time with someone before you're able to successfully communicate with them i, I i'll give you a nod this this works in non-sexual relationships too like when i first started coming on prime kai um you know I felt that I wasn't being heard. I wasn't able to voice my opinion in the way that I wanted, that I felt understood. But now, after doing this for months and months, I feel that Prime actually does, for the most part, understand what I'm trying to say when I make the these cut. claims. The cut. You, yeah. you, you did it over, and now people listen to you. Maybe maybe that's true too. It's it's all about presentation. You went as to well. the you went the Breaking Bad route. Um, but but that... that's that's important, right? Like that's important to to know that that it takes it could take months to develop a, a relationship with someone where you can actually communicate effectively, and and to and to ignore that and to and to to act as if like that you could just 
instantly, as uh, last username was saying, that the media and things we see where we just instantly know that we suddenly, oh, we knew that was the one. That's such an insidious thing. And the media portrays this because it's romantic or whatever, but it's caused so many problems in how we deal with each other on a, a sexual basis. That well, well what's, the, what's the reward? What's the reward? You guys, uh, like last username and you have talked about like uh, the level of effort. The level of effort that's necessary. Okay. So it seems like a mutual level of effort on both sides. But once again, like I was saying, like it feels like a to be able to relationship. Be heard. I'll let me answer you then. We wig all. Yeah. Like to me, and this is for me, to feel heard is a very important thing to me. And when I meet someone and I am able to develop a relationship where I actually feel that they understand me and hear me, is very very. It, it, it's good. It's something I want. It's something I desire. Like casual stuff, like just getting my dick wet. Okay, whatever. But it's that that I find most rewarding. So, um, so I uh, uh, we'll go to Ashley next. I just wanted to uh, well, shout out to uh, Dewey, what Dewey was trying to say. I think it was actually um pretty um uh, persuasive. What he's trying to get across is that like the onus uh, is on men like uh and and, we're, and working off both both what doobie and wick said um like uh it's very difficult because of like the trauma that um people are coming uh, into not just women but also men right uh the, the, the people you don't realize it especially at the very beginning but this person is coming in with everything right like all their past baggage and that is with you in the bedroom. It's an invisible, right? An invisible crowd, but it's all there with you. And that affects how they respond. And so, um, like, people who, like, freeze up and can't uh, uh, say no, right? Or just say yes, cuz. Um, because uh, they want to please you. Like, like they've been told, like, you need to be able to please your partner. Um, and so just say yes, and they may say yes in a convincing manner, but even then, still, they don't actually want to do it. Like, it's a fucking minefield as a guy to, 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 to manage this, right? Like, as a person who cares any which way, right? And, and I'll, and I'll uh, assume that everyone, all, all the guys here on this uh, panel care, right? It's a fucking minefield. Of right. I mean, if you just walk up to someone in the street and say, hey, I'd like to have sex with you now. Um, that's, you're being honest, right? You're being hundred percent honest, but most people would see that as some kind of, like, it very easily be seen as some kind of sexual harassment to just say that to a stranger. So it's not as, it's not as simple as just being honest, right? You have to, you have to, uh, feel it out somehow. You have to do things to figure out whether they're interested in you before you can move on to just at being honest and saying that, right? So it's not just a matter of honesty. Um, there's more to it than that. And that's what, that's what we're not, we're not really honest about when we just say be honest you can't really just be honest and and i think that we need to also um you could maybe this is like toxic masculinity or the patriarch or some shit um but men are also taught that they're they're supposed to be the aggressive ones they're supposed to be the ones that are first off approach but then then make the move to try to kiss then make the move for sex right they're, they're supposed to be the ones taking that first step right so if you're supposed to be the person doing that and you do and the person you're, you're doing that with uh, is it giving you mixed messages or is giving you like uh, just like a, just flat out lying to you, which happens all the all the time too, right? Um, I, I, actually, I mentioned uh, a situation on a Stardust channel once. Where this the girl that I'd met up with for like a one night stand kind of thing, and about halfway into this, I kind of I decided like I'm not actually interested in having sex with you, you know. So like, yeah, I'm just gonna be here for 20 minutes. We'll talk, and I'm, I'm gonna take off, right? Um, but then she she says something like uh. Uh, you know, well, just just so you know, I'm not sleeping with you tonight, which uh, and which is a lie. I, she wanted to have sex with me. That's why we're there. But she said that, and this kind of like kick, kick, kicked off the competitive side of my brain. I was like, okay, well now I need to have sex with you, <laughs> all right? Um, and of course she gave me all the oh, you know, I'm a virgin, all this bullshit, right? That she was not a virgin, right? Um, so these kind of like silly, stupid. We had we were having sex like 20 minutes later, right? These silly fucking childish little mind games uh women, women play with men right because they want to feel like they're putting up some resistance and they're being like a good girl you know they're not they're not being a whore whatever the fuck right uh and and they like put up little walls that they want men to break down but how how are you supposed to know that as a guy when someone's putting up like a false wall and when someone has like an actual wall like it's extremely difficult to tell the to tell the difference a lot sometimes so 
I don't know. I, I think we're, we're putting too much onus on men here. The, there's obviously problems. With this, this is why they, you know, if you were, were to look at, look at the stats, right? Uh, violent crime, rape, mostly men commit these things. The, the reported uh, violent crimes, sexual assaults, and whatnot, mostly men. Uh, but we've, I think we all acknowledge when a lot of times when men are sexually assaulted or physically assaulted by women, they don't report it. So who knows what that number is? Um, yeah, I think I think we need to be way more like, you know, way more uh, balanced in how we approach the topic. And, how, for, and I think typically people aren't balanced at all. Uh, for for me, it's about that balance. It's about the fact that they say communication. Like uh, Wick gave his answer, and it's a great answer of like what you get out of having like a uh, like a, a communication in a relationship, and it works both ways. And you're talking about this reward, but we also have to acknowledge that men in America are under far more stress. Uh, than uh, female presenting individuals in America, male presenting, uh, like uh, masculine presenting in individuals. It's true. Like the suicide rates, the 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 uh, the amount of violence that's done, men that go to like uh, prison rates, etc. Like at the end of the day, if you're a, a female presenting individual in America, um, you're gonna get more aid. You're going to get more aid. It's just guaranteed. You're gonna get more aid. Women can go to spas blood. to relax. Men so it's like, it. so it's like the reward is the same, but the stress is more on men in society. So it's like, why can't it be, why can't there be? Why can't we ever talk about, it? why can't there be more onus on women for the communication? Let's go to Why Ash is it 50-50? Oh, it's Ashley. Yeah, she wants oh. to communicate right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're wrong in saying that there's problems with like um, culture around women in our society, right? I don't, I want to start out by saying I don't disagree with you, but I think that there is a major prevalence of cult or in our culture of I, I can't say the word, but a subset of men shows this very well. Um, but yeah, I, I think that men feel very entitled if they get with a woman to sex. There's actually someone in Prime Chat that I can quote here. Um, it's crazy that women go straight, I can't say that word on Twitch, if they get abandoned or leading on a man and not having sex with them. Actions have consequences. And I think that this is a common opinion that men have where women owe them sex in a relationship and that's their prize for being there. And I think that that's a, that's a difficult thing to talk about, but I think that like how we begin talking about that is that like, yeah, women are people too, right? Like they're not just objects of sex. And I think that there's a large community of people that think that they are kind of just objects for sex. Okay, and if you are a sexual object, um... That is that is not something that you want, but that guarantees you certain things that men do not have. It guarantees um, you that you'll always have a place to stay, that your government will care more about you. Uh -huh. We live in a patriarchal society where people value sex objects. As a man, you're not even that. At the end of the day, I mean, if you if you don't have money to provide, you don't have these things, you will be the person that's homeless. But what if you're thought. not able to provide sex? Then you're just as bad as a then you're just you're in the same spot as a man if you're, you're unable so to different. provide if you're unable if you're in a position where you are unable to provide sex you're now talking about like what percentage of the population what what do you mean because a sex object implies like in order to be a sex object let's say, let's say not willing let's say not willing yeah why why do yeah. you why why should somebody consent to being an object even if that being an object is giving them all of these benefits you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to. It's the but it's the idea that in that position you're you're signing you're not signing up, but you're in a situation where you're viewed as a sex object, and then you're only talking about the negatives of this, and none of these tiny positives. Whereas men don't even have that. So it's like in that in, in that sense, like men, you're not even a sex object. You're not a sex. I, object. I really don't want to. You have to work to become a sex object. women thing. I really I don't. Am. I think that'd be uh, unproductive. Yeah. I don't think it's it, we need to like well men have it harder or women have it hard. I don't. I think we can ignore all that. I think that's un, unhelpful. I think we just get straight to the fact that in both cases, in all cases, better communication and and we can talk about what that looks like as last user list username said helps. This this helps solve the problem in a way that just advice does not. And it, once again, men are ignored. The only By time we own. don't want to talk right. about scoreboards is um, whenever you're on the board. Like, uh, who wants to talk here. about who um, has the worst? We always I, talk uh, about who has the worst. There's a reason. So I've been trying to push girls who were younger than me to start making like the first move right um and it, it and into when they see somebody they like 
to practice like going and making that move, right? Even that is like, and even getting rejected, right? Um, and I always like push younger girls and me and, and younger friends, you know, I think that it's super important to realize that you can exercise like this, this will, right? Um, it's like unfathomable. I, I, like it, it's, it's interesting how unfathomable it is to you until you realize you have the choice to do certain things, right? Especially coming from certain like subcultures, right? Um, certain subcultures are even more backwards than as far as like um, women's places and even when you're allowed to speak or make noises, you know? So, um, so I think part of it is I'm, I think it is important to start trying to level the playing field. But even if we can't level the playing field 100%, um, I think that there's a way we can still we can still work towards better communication, even if the, this balances off with somebody being slightly more objectified than the other person, even if this balance is, is off with like somebody being having to be more of the aggressor in these situations or not aggressor but initiator right um obviously uh we can try to level it and 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 encourage women to be initiators more but i think there's going to always be some sort of imbalance and we just need to like work through uh, figure out how to like communicate through that right so, uh, so, if you I initiate wanna, you got to deal with yeah no you got to no. deal with objection right yeah yeah and i actually want to combine something you and last year's name uh said um, so last year's name talked about like why, why don't we like you know, look into those norms now like why don't we come up with that right um so I, I'll, I'll take your challenge damn it uh, so um but what does that what does it actually look like and like what should societal norms be um uh, how should that be restructured so uh talking about victim blaming if uh, we are saying that women should have more agency in sexual encounters, right? Uh, which is what Stardust is uh, that way. Uh, Stardust was saying, right? That women should have more agency, um, take control of uh, the things they want. Um, and uh, we are saying that uh, there should be good, good communication all around, right? Well, then if someone fails to communicate um, and their partner was didn't force themselves right they on them they just like the so there's one part partner a part, partner b uh partner a um uh is uh maybe initiating contact partner b is hesitant but does not um say so right so if there is um blame or responsibility however you want to call it right does partner b ever have any blame or responsibility or not communicate now there might be all kinds of reasons why uh they don't uh they exist but still you didn't in that situation so it's like how should society look at that there's absolutely situations like and this is like maybe a hotter take there's absolutely situations that um women have found themselves in because of something like because of not speaking up and that there, ha there has to be some level of responsibility for that that's not I, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean it was okay for the other person like the other person doesn't also carry probably the majority of the responsibility in these situations but there there's absolutely situations where people can do something that's crossing the line and they truly didn't know and they truly didn't have a way of uh, like well, they for like they didn't um they they didn't catch on to whatever hint she wanted to to catch on to so um the second part of that is like um um what should a societal norm be I think that dating can be um can actually be really easy i don't think you should grow to like people i think you should date people you like and who like you like i don't think that you like the, the idea of wooing people and make getting someone to like you i think that that leads to a lot of bad outcomes because it, it's really easy to you, you can tell when the situation works when you, you're going to date with somebody and you already kind of like each other because things go way smoother that way but okay bam i don't think you uh, addressed my point exactly i want to hear from uh we can ask the first part uh no i don't think the first part i don't think it, it did you um, said does anyone ever take blame does the women ever should take blame yeah but not it? in the scenario you, you you put out there you said um like people uh aren't catching um 
uh, the messages uh, that you're sending and people are doing things well, accidentally. So like, yeah, I'm saying uh, if you didn't communicate, like you should have some responsibility for that. Like, oh, like they okay. should have known because I, I, like, I made a face, right? I'm like, well, sometimes that's not enough. Oh, like, okay. not right. speaking, you should take some blood. I'm sorry, Ashley. What does it mean to communicate? I mean, I talked about my experience earlier, where I didn't say a word that said no, but it was very clear that I was not into it. I was. It was right. good that guy caught it, but I don't think that that like so, I don't think that so that should be a standard. So if would have been partially my fault, you think? In terms of playing? it's hard. Also, yeah, I'll say yeah, I'll say yeah. Okay. I'll bite it. So my take yeah, on was crying, man. There was crying. That's like a little bit. That yeah, is, I mean, that is on higher. That is a telltale sale. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it wasn't like so a, it wasn't no, a no. I, I think I think no, no. So I, and and. I think you're getting to an interesting point there, uh, Ashley. When you say like, uh, like, what is, uh, like, what does communication mean, right? Um, I think there's being purposely obtuse, right? You can you can do that, right? When your partner uh, maybe not crying, but is like wincing, right? Like to stop and say, oh, actually, I have I have a story, and I've talked I've talked about this before on stream. There was a I, I was with a woman, right? Believe it or not, right? It actually happened. I was very excited, right? Go me. Um, so I was with a woman <laughs> many years ago, um, and uh, she, um, uh, we were you know, doing it, and then she started like making these noises, right? I'm like, what is these noises? Stop! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Don't... Never again! Never again! Ah! Anyway, um, <laughs> so she, she started making these noises, and I didn't understand, right? So I stopped and say, "Hey, uh, like, what's going on, right? Like, everything okay?" She says, "Everything's fine." Okay, I continue, right? And she and she keeps like making these weird noises and it sounded like noises she was making previously right so I stop again hey is everything okay like are you uncomfortable like, like can i do something do you want to do something different it's like no just keep going we're fine and i kept going and then to a little bit then like I, and then I had to stop she was right? cleaving then <laughs> she uh after after the fact she told me that like uh she was like uncomfortable um like it was i don't know something was going on but like penetration at, at that point angle, felt painful angle. right i don't know what it was right but like she didn't like it but like i specifically asked i stopped and i checked in not once but twice right i stopped and like, hey is there is everything okay but then she in that case she literally lied to me but um there's other times where people just even won't even communicate um that and like where should responsibility lie? Maybe, maybe, maybe I should have stopped immediately. And I'm like, I'm honestly explaining this. Maybe I should have stopped immediately the moment where I sensed something was weird, right? But then she said, okay. So what? I don't know. So, yeah, uh, Ashley. Can't... Oh, sorry. Oh, you know, someone I... says, don't stop. I, I'm going to take that to mean don't stop. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't really blame yeah. yourself. Yeah, I think like, I, I, I don't know if blame is going to be a useful. The onus is on. I don't, I don't think don't blame is going to be useful. In don't the... stop. Yeah, uh, blame. Uh, I don't think blame is gonna is gonna improve things. Kind of in in the middle area where people, you know, there's gonna be rules that we should follow, that everyone and it's important that rules be be easily followable and understandable to everyone. And I think and and you can say you know if someone breaks those rules then you blame them, but with whenever people are following the rules, like I say, there's still gonna be a lot of room to do things badly and for people to get. To have un, you know, uncomfortable experiences and to get hurt, and I don't think blame is going to be a useful tool in that area to to improve that. I think you know, as long as everyone's following the rules, at that point, it's just a matter of everyone try to you know, everyone for themselves. Basically, you try to be the best, you know, do the best thing to help yourself have good experiences, and to not have you know, to to and for the other person to have good experiences too. I mean, you care about that, um, but I don't think you know putting blame on people in, in that area is going to be, is going to help people What that's because that's just going to make it danger, more dangerous for people and people get more scared and they protect themselves and they don't, and they don't do things. Uh, Ashley. Um, and then we'll go to, um, uh, uh, Stardust and then Link. I just wanted to say prime. I think in that situation, you did the right thing of asking. I think that a big thing is even if you don't, like even if you don't necessarily stop even just asking for reaffirmation is so big because like um in my situation it like he stopped so it worked out but if he had asked me hey are you okay to do this 
I think I would have said no, but like I wouldn't have offered the no myself, you know? I think there's times where even then somebody might feel pressured to say yes, but like that's when you have to like look for other cues. But like, I think if there's ever any confusion, the default should be stop and ask. And I think that that's great to do. I think that that's such a great thing that's so easy and causes so much less confusion. And yes, the onus might be, or it might push somebody to have to take step up to do that. But I think that's very important. Thank you. Uh, start us and then Rick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think like the, uh, so I think that like these situations are very complicated and I wouldn't blame yourself for that. Um, I don't know that I would even blame the other person in that situation either because it seems like they maybe, I don't know, had, they felt some sort of like pressure inside them or something. I don't know. I can't really say. Um, for anybody to blame you for that crime would just be like dumb, you know. Uh, uh, but um, I think I think that's also really really interesting story that you bring up because um, we talk about like how how often <laughs> how often women are pressured to like to even like. Um, I don't know, lie about during the, the experience, right? Um, uh, and so it's it's a norm that we should probably work on breaking. Uh, Wick? Yeah, so um, a couple things to touch on here. And the first one I want to do is the importance of being a self-advocate. You are the most important advocate for yourself that you have in any of these situations. If you feel uncomfortable, if you are not okay, if you are not um, having a good time, if you want something that is not being provided, it is important that you at least do your best to communicate that to all involved. That is an important skill to learn and have. And I understand that trauma and because of events and because of social pressure and because all these things, um, that is hard, easier said than done. But I think that this is an important skill for every single one of us to develop. And I think empowerment, empowering women and men both to be self-advocates is something that we should, as a society, be doing. We should empower people so that we're there, when they are in a situation which they find uncomfortable, they don't say, oh, no, don't stop or uh, just keep going, that they, they communicate it and they feel fine doing so. I know we're not there yet in society. There's a lot of reasons, but we need to get there. We have to or else we're going to continue to have these problems. That said, that said, there have been times when I've been in a, an encounter where I wasn't having the best time. I was like, ah, but I cared about the person and my partner enough and I wanted to give them pleasure. And so I continued to do so. And that's okay too, because that's, that's not a, a, a knock on me or the partner in that situation. That's just how relationships sometimes work. And that's okay. But, when you are not okay with it, you have to, you have to have the ability to communicate that in some way or else it's going to be a very bad day. Wait, um, go ahead. Uh, I just want to ask, have you ever had somebody that weighs nearly double your weight on top of you no. in a sexual encounter? No. It is extremely scary to stand up to that. I understand that. And understand it's, it's not scary. even about self-advocacy. It's not even about necessarily trust. It's in that moment that it's really scary. You feel very trapped and it feels very That's traumatic. That's because something is scary. If I'm shorter men, short kings, where, king where I have been scared. Where I have been I think there is still self question, please. Self -care. But let me answer the question, please. Where it's not been a sexual situation, but I've been uh, absolutely been in a where I have feared for my life, where I knew if I'd said anything or I did anything, that uh, bad things might happen. But even then, it is important for me to be able to communicate. And I had to communicate. But otherwise, the situation, the bad thing would have happened. Uh, I had to, to, to speak out and say, I am being assaulted and attacked and I need help. Just just add to say the magic word. Just add please. Just be like, stop, please. I mean, I think uh, again. I here's the thing: is that like, I don't know if like this person, you know, I I can't speak on this this situation. But when you um you want to give people practical advice about again engaging in these encounters, right? And some of that practical advice is going to be like you have to be aware that there is a risk that. Um, that this, you know, that this could turn badly, right? And 
and once that per once you've accepted that risk um if you're in that moment i think uh, i mean at least you're informed right that this was the risk right um it, it's not an ideal situation but you should there there should be at least when you advocate for yourself you've tried something you know um and it's easier said than done 100 percent, 100 percent. it's easier said than done but but um but there there needs to be some communicate we need to improve communication somehow start us and this goes uh, back actually, to Start us, yep. Ashley. You, you, uh, you were, and I'll go to you uh, next, Bam. Um, you were uh, basically talking about power and balances, and it works in multiple ways, right? So, uh, this is why, like, you know, uh, when I was talking about the responsibility or the blame or the onus or whatever term you want to use, right? Assigning that to women uh, for not communicating is difficult because. Um, uh, oftentimes, not all the times, but oftentimes, uh, they come in a situation where the, uh, their partner, um, is, you know, more physically capable, uh, than they are. Um, and so, like, but yeah, that's gonna be I all. mean, huh? look, that's good. Uh, that's going to be in most relationships where there's a, a, a man and a woman. Men are just naturally a little bit bigger than women. They're naturally going to be a, a bit stronger, right? That is something that, like, you accept in engaging in any of these relationships so yeah you do have to at a certain point be comfortable enough to say uh, something I, I, and wait wait, 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 wait just let me finish i promise i'll be i'll be quick it, 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 especially in like it that's why like uh, we, we talk about these like people that you don't know well enough right um hopefully Hopefully when you engage in something with these people that you don't know very well, you still feel confident enough to say something to them, right? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I'm just acknowledging that. I'm acknowledging, like, biology, right? Um, and, and acknowledging what uh, Ashley is trying to communicate to us, um, that yeah. this can be uh, terrifying, right? Like, you're saying that, you, well, we got, that's something that you got to accept. Well, sure, yeah, that's why, that's, if it's a casual, uh, situation, or maybe not, all right, even a, a long-term situation, you've already accepted that, it's already baked in, but still, in that moment, there's a person who's doing something to you that you, uh, may feel uncomfortable with, and, uh, you, in that moment, are intimidated. And, and the only point I was going to bring up, uh, with this is that, um, that that works on multiple levels. So it's not just being physically intimidated. There's all kinds of power imbalances, right? Like economic uh, uh, imbalances, status imbalances, right? Like you could be a man and um, uh, you could have a boss who's uh, pressuring you for sex and then like uh, a, a woman and you could end up doing it, right? And be uncomfortable, hate the whole thing. Um, but look, it is what it is, right? Like you got to you're making the same choice that a lot of other women uh, uh, women have made in the past right when it's been a, a woman to a male boss and that can happen the other way around the power imbalance right um uh economically if someone has more money right and you're aligned with that person uh, you, women you do more what you often do. seek women uh more often seek power imbalances it's like well, like women hey, are more often like, thank you women are more what? often likely it's 100 percent true. I, okay, I want to respond to Prime real quick. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's yeah. a whole other thing. Ash, they Ash, they Ash. look for men that have like certain credit scores, certain amount of money, certain assets, certain things they can provide more often than men do. Ashley? Um, okay. I'm going full wig sale. I respect it. It's true. I can end up going wig sale. Um, I just want to respond to Prime work. I do think that women should get more comfortable asserting their boundaries in those situations. I do want to be clear. I do think that that's important. But I also think that we always have to tell men in these situations, hey, consent isn't just a yes. It's not like ask questions while you're going through it, right? I think that's an important thing. Well, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm not denying that women should assert boundaries too, right? I'm just well, also saying that like in, in certain situations, it can be very scary. And like, I think that, yeah, we should teach women to be better about that yeah like myself included but i also just think that like men that ask questions men that stop and make sure are very it's a very good habit to get into and i think it's very healthy well but I mean, what, what also, are you like you have to set some boundaries at some point what are you obligated like you can't always just assume that this maybe this person i'm with might want to say no but is afraid to so i so i just what ask them constantly Okay. I mean, yeah, if, if there's any, if there's anything that would make you doubt that, then just ask. 
I it's think a, that well, but it's a two no, second thing. It's no. hey, are you cool with this? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. That's two, I think that two, I think those things are good. I don't think that those things can be the standard. I think the last thing we need in society is to put more of the power, more of the power in sexual, like in the sexual dynamic, in men's hands. Like I'm well, just men, men don't need. Questions. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, you're asking men to, you're giving men more responsibility, and this that's is like a this is this, responsibility. Yeah, this like, is no, saying, no, but it's necessary. not, a, it's it's not a necessary thing. It's a, you it's don't a, think it's, so. No, it's a it's a, it's a good thing, but it can't be the standard that a man that doesn't um, ask every two minutes is now like. Well, we're not talking every two minutes. But but that, but I'm, well, I, are, you, I, mean, I don't know. But, but I'm, it's not clear what you're talking about. But I'm saying that. But I'm saying that like we're again we're we're removing we're removing women's agency. Like we're and, and the only reason I'm saying this is because we're talking about adults. If like and. Uh, one of the standards to be in an adult relationship should be like, oh, you know, like if, if you're someone's like, I don't really think I can speak up. I don't, I'm not that type of person, you know, like the moments get awkward, blah, blah, blah. Like if you're, if this, you're th this type of person, then you don't need to be in a relationship. You don't need to be having, having sex. This, this is just, this, this speaking to adults because there can be a standard we hold to adults too. But like uh, saying that like, oh, you know what? Like some women are going to be like that. So men, this is the new added thing. The next responsibility you have to do. Not only have to do you have to get the initial though. consent. Okay. okay, I really want to. But I'm not saying I'm not saying it's not. Too, I'm not saying it's too much. I'm saying that that can't be the standard. The standard has to Why be some bare be minimum standard? threshold, because because women have to do nothing then. No, no. To 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 say to men, but exists. or to women that, and I'll say this to both. It's not just to men that I'm saying this. I'm saying people, human beings. Check with your partner every now and again to make sure they're okay with what's going on. You are taking it as if I'm just speaking to men here. Actually, I am just speaking absolutely to men here. not. Wait, well, I'm I'm wait, if, I not if I don't check I with my partner, no, let me, let me, I let find me say, out. Let me, let, me, let me continue. Obviously, every relationship is going to be different. Obviously, as you grow in a relationship, you're going to learn to communicate in nonverbal ways as well. And sometimes you'll be able to do that and you won't need to check in but some do there's been some relationships i've been in where i absolutely had to check on a regular basis not every two minutes and it gets annoying sometimes when i do this because i've been told I, I check too often sometimes and they say stop it you're annoying me chill the fuck out just go with it and that's fine and i respect that but in in especially in new situations especially in new relate relationships it is not by any means whatsoever taking agency or power away from women to tell men um Hey, check every once in a while. No, because I tell you're saying the it's same good. Thing too. What do you say that? Do you're a rapist. Wick, no, when you say that, what are you things. actually saying? Are you saying you must check, or are you saying it would be a nice thing for you to check? I so already said, to. obviously, in certain relationships, you it's not a must. But in new ones, in new ones, in ones you're not clear of, and when you haven't learned to communicate entirely yet, absolutely. Yeah, but there's, there's, so, so with, no, there's a wait, risk no, you with, take wait, when you are not, not having a... Yeah, there's a risk you take sure. when you go. And if you're okay with that risk that you're going to violate yeah, someone's consent, you. that's okay. not the that's conversation we're you. having. You're saying that a so, guy that didn't check in is, is not like you're saying that that's that, that if you that's don't what do you're that, you're a saying rapist. i'm saying but that's not hey, asking i'm, I'm asking saying. you that can, so can I I like let me be clear let me be clear just real quick let me be very clear um when you don't do this it's the guy's fault sometimes sometimes nothing bad will happen sometimes no consent will be violated sometimes it'll be a okay sure but if it goes but wrong there is a risk there is a risk, an absolute risk, when you don't do this, that you will unintentionally violate someone's consent. That you will violate someone in a way that you did not intend to do. So if that is something that is important to you, then you absolutely should take this step. Ooh, but whose responsibility is it, is what I'm saying. It doesn't Ooh, matter. It? Oh, no, that's the yeah, only it does thing matter. It absolutely it's the it does matter. The it it matters. That's it, whose fault it is. Or, it matters, yeah, but yeah, just yeah, bite the bullet and say it's on men. Just bite the, 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 Why are you bite fetishizing the this assigning blame? No, 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 oh, no, someone has to be your assigning blame. Because someone, because that's the only way sexual assault can happen. Someone has to be responsible. Just bite the bullet and say that men have to take the blame there. When you say violating someone's consent, that sounds an awful lot like like a blame right uh, you know, like normally if you said someone said uh, that i, I was again, violating someone's consent i would take that to be an accusation you know you're and the one that that's said... going to happen absolutely if you don't but what i'm saying is that and, and do you disagree with this that there's a very real risk if you do not do this that you might violate someone's consent oh, it's not that big a deal. i would say that, that you know men are men consent. are responsible i, I would consider another, maybe not another responsibility maybe my right? partner was not having the best time and there was something i could have done proactively to make them have a better time but i would not call that violating their consent 
I think when you use it, call it violating consent, you're definitely implying that there's some there's a, there's a blame. You did something you don't think wrong. That yeah, violated it something bad. Like, yeah. I'll ask you today. I want to be very clear. So you don't think that it can happen? That it can happen. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. You're missing I, it. I don't I'm call that. Last user, Dave. I, want to I don't call what you described where you're having consensual sex and then because you didn't ask them, do you still want to do this? And and they suddenly decided they didn't, but they didn't say anything. Then that means you're violating their consent. How no, do you know I, it's I, still I, consensual unless you ask? But I'm saying, would you tell? Would because you tell... they didn't. I think it's up to them. If you're having consensual sex and they suddenly decide they don't want to, they, it's on them to say. They should. To I'm absolutely no, saying stop. they should, but they don't always. And I. But that's okay. But then if they don't, I, like I, I'm not going to take. I, I don't feel responsible for that if they don't. Okay, I bad, I but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take a blame. In the sexual yeah. situation, should probably ask him to make sure that's cool to do that, or like. But, game but I'm saying, like, like, ask ask you every, like, like to be very lie, clear. You when you're talking about blame, but asking it's every ten minutes not, during sex, right? if somebody's like, you still should. wants to do it, it's like. Hold on, no, hold on. This, this is really though. important because the the yeah, thing is, what we have to that kind of shit. Hold on. The reason that the reason why it's important to clarify this because we are. I want to know if we're also saying that a woman who who like is a situation that doesn't speak up doesn't speak up she's increasing her like she's she's likely to be sexually assaulted and she has to take the fault in that and i don't think we're saying uh, that so with that so we can't say the opposite things, we can't say a man who doesn't things, check in okay things are starting to link fault. up here I, I, things are linking up here uh, they're saying like they're saying I, all right well men like we just we choose we choose men that happen to be taller happen to have like more money or what have you in most situations what? this is just happenstance uh, then when we're in these relationships we got that. If we're, uh, okay. let's not talk about that but like once we get in these relationships I, can, if, can, can okay, we, men okay. are more likely can, men are more really likely like... to men are like more in these relationships are more likely to be stressed men are more likely to progress sexual instances in america and then they go like well men you know they'll they they're the ones that have to check in in this and then this and anytime we talk about that then it's like why are you talking about men why are you talking about men this is not about it's about everybody in society it's like why like, like I, you wanted to have the conversation you want to talk about communication at the end of the day how come it's just your communication it's just your communication okay so i i i, I love silencing women just like anyone else but like at some point you have to let start us talk so start us please thank you um so i i think one thing I would say is that, like, um, I I don't think that we are going to level the playing field completely ever, right? I and I don't think that women and men should be treated exactly the same. Um, I I I'm I'm just gonna be like uh, straight up, like, on average, like, you know, men. Are, are stronger right they are on average going to be bigger right even if it's only by a little bit that increased uh his strength um output is enough to like you know it, it's enough to fuck you up right um so i and i think that it's it's not a bad thing to acknowledge that there are just going to be there are just going to be imbalances right again um a, like, yes, we should try to level the playing field as far as communication goes, but there are just going to be things that are never going to be equal. And I'm not really sure what the solution is there. Um, well, like what, specifically? Uh, uh, like... Like you're I saying think... we can't be equal in communication? Sorry. No, communication, that's why we need to try and equal it in communication, right? That's why we need to try and equal it in communication. It's just, I think that currently women are, are socialized to be pretty agreeable, right? Um, and, and that's why I'm trying to push for, for women to be a little bit less agreeable. Mm -hmm. um, but... Why can't it be the opposite? You know, in that, in that, in that scenario then, like, um, why can't women be the individuals that communicate far more if it leads to good results? If women are sure. communicating far more than men. Can is. I That's clarify my position? Uh, uh, well, to... yeah, let me just like, I, I guess, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm having trouble articulating what I'm trying to say. I just think that, I think at a certain point we need to accept that there are going to be imbalances and and kind of like um fuck i don't know where i'm going with this actually yeah just go ahead oh, just, ashley um 
Okay, so I, I kind of started this, and I just want to clarify, because Bam made a point that I want to clarify. I'm not saying that this is a woman-exclusive thing. It's just that I was saying in the moment, because I was ex my experience was with a man, right? But I think if you're non-binary, if you're a woman, if you're a man, right? I think that in general, the person progressing the sexual encounter, right? Should, like, not, like, I, I think that, like, we should teach people that, yeah, if you're going to progress the sexual encounter and you're getting vibes off, it's not like... I, I wouldn't prosecute someone for rape if I never said no, right? Like, I, I wouldn't do that. But at the same time, I think that, like, to engage in, like, healthy sex, maybe, like, if you get a vibe, if somebody's crying, if somebody's flinching, like, yeah, maybe, like, and this goes for anyone. This could be a woman doing this, that, like, let's say you're really uncomfortable with that type of sex. Let's say you're not good with oral sex and a woman starts going for oral sex on you, right? Like, she should probably ask if it looks like you're not enjoying it, you know? Hmm. It's, not, it's not a man specific issue it's not a gender specific issue i think that's no. an issue of just like progressing i, I want i want to piggyback off this because i i think uh, again we're, we're turning this into a men versus women thing again when it when it doesn't have to be and we don't need to do this when when i say these things i'm not saying men only or women only or who bears most responsibility men or women i think both partners bear responsibility in this i think both partners and when i say of like I wouldn't advocate for like legal punishment to be brought against someone who doesn't um who doesn't uh check in the partner didn't communicate and something happened and one person was in, in uncomfortable I'm not advocating for any legal punishment to have, to happen here what I am advocating for what I'm trying to get people to understand is that communication in a sexual relationship is very very important on both ends for both sides that every person involved needs to be able to communicate their wants needs and desires and that takes time and that takes effort and that takes energy and yeah it's scary sometimes but we need to do it we need we to do it that. regardless we that, that. That. Let's end it on that's, that. That's, that was the good. contention that's here is sure. over blame and i don't know i don't understand when you say you should do this you should communicate blah blah, blah. there's multipliers um, here yeah it's are, not are you saying that uh, is are you bringing blame into that or are you just saying you know, if you want to have the best sex, then you should communicate. But if best you don't have the best sex, you don't communicate, then it's nobody's fault. Best relationship. And, yeah. and when, like, that, like again, when we talk about blame, what are we saying? Are we saying legal action? Like, no. yes. But I would no, I'm talking about blame. There's so a, there's a definite con distinction me, between try. blame and not blame, aside from this. the law, right? When a relationship, a person in a relationship fails to communicate, they have some responsibility. Because they're failing to communicate. But as simple as that. But okay. what if both people fail to communicate? And they're they're it, both spare responsibility. It's like so they're it both like, to but it doesn't make sense. They can't yeah, both why does it? Why can't yeah, both if, they, if they're both to blame, because, then neither of them are, right? need to That's go not to true. the point of blame yeah. is that no. how much blame? How much it's like it's like uh uh if I punch you in the face and then you stab me in the gut and then say both of us are to blame. Well, what then next? What's next? It's like, just like Stardust was saying, when I posed this earlier, they gave the answer, like, there are differences. You have to acknowledge that there are differences. And so we have to discuss different consequences, different actions, because there are differences. You have to say, well, it's the same. Like, the, like can, everyone needs to communicate, but then I think what are the differences in communication? I just think it's a really uh, uh, like I thought we were going to be done, but I think it's a, something that's really weak that people say on these conversations, and it's not intentional. And that no one's like I don't think it's like coming from like a bad faith perspective. It's, so, it's, we like we we say things like um, we say that like oh you know like I'm not talking about men I'm talking about women I'm talking about it I'm just talking about people who initiate like but we understand in the society we live in that's been like in the vast majority yes. of cases so like so we're getting around we're trying to be we're saying we're being included but we're really not we're, what we're prescribing is only going to apply okay to all right so i i do want to i'll give ashley the last word i like we, we yeah, went way over time for this thing. one um though I, I there's still more to cover right like this is a really interesting topic and i actually really want to come uh, deal with something wiggle said earlier um but i i don't i don't have time uh maybe it will come on the open but uh ashley wanna, let um you oh, yeah, I was gonna respond to what Wig said um before. Uh we all, you can yeah, go ahead. He, uh, they won't be able to respond to you. You can just dunk on them. Oh no, 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 I'm not gonna do that. To no, Wiggle. don't do it. Dunk no, them. actually, no, I'm not. No, I'll, I'll, respond not to, I'll respond to Bam. No. You know, hey, take a um, nice big fam, dump on him. <laughs> hey, fam. I have since moved off um demisexual, which is pansexual weird. But anyway, 
I've since become just a straight up lesbian and I've started only dating women and I've had these encounters in a very similar means with like women. So I think that like, yeah, it does just kind of depend on who's the initiator, you know? I think that you can have um in like in in lesbian relationships, I usually am having a woman advance on me. And like, yeah, I, I think that that's just like it depends on the gender of the partner that's advancing. I think that either gender can do that. That's oh, what I think that's that, Okay. That's fair. All right. Um so we'll move on to our uh next